And now, welcome to the Great Cigar and Pipe Show. Presented by Hiram and Solomon Cigars. The Oliva Cigar Family. And the J.C. Newman Cigar Company. Coming to you live from the Corona Cigar Company Studios. Oh, the feedback is horrible. I think it's right because it's close to his phone. That's oh, right. my God. Oh, all right. It'll be a few minutes, folks. We'll <laughs> work out some of the technical difficulties when you're doing a live shoot. <laughs> Well, there, 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 we are on. There, 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 yes, there, there, Colin there. Uh, McClure feedback. We we hear wow. you. We are in the <laughs> a cigar mobile lounge, the big fella cigar mobile lounge, and we are in awe of this place, folks. This is an amazing, truly. I'm going to say it, not because Brian's sitting there and he's a friend of mine. I don't care. This is the best fucking cigar lounge I've yeah, ever been yeah, in, yeah. okay? Yeah, <laughs> this is absolutely stunning. So Get jump on their website, so on, follow guys. out, follow where they're going to be. No, it's impossible. Something's there. Yeah. The feedback is Just making noise. Teresa, None of your thoughts. Step, was step back a little bit. Maybe it's your phone. I don't even have it on. Okay. Wow, what's... What's causing All right. that? Big feedback. Yeah. Hold on, folks. We're trying to check it out here. Wow. This is what happens when you do a live show. Yeah, this folks. is it. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> Bear with us, everybody. Blowing up my eardrum. <laughs> there we go. Right. Okay, that's gone. <laughs> Love the feedback. Yes, Orlando, we know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Dave Zirkel. Hey, Brian. Hey, All right, Frank. That's, that's there, good. Folks. That's good. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that was pretty <laughs> unbearable. Right there, Ooh, oh, yes. How are you? <laughs> Josh hey. Rivas, how are you, big man? All yeah, right. Thank you. All right. All right, so here we are in the mobile cigar lounge, which is mind-boggling. I mean, I feel like I'm in a brick and mortar building. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. This is Thanks. incredible. This is like this is like a classic. Old fashioned kind of speakeasy man's lounge, <laughs> yeah. you know, for just relaxing. Old school, you know, old school, um, Brian. You got you and your brother did it right. You really make us feel like we step back in time. Thanks. The tin was, roof is amazing. Thanks. That was kind of the, the plan was to kind of make it that speakeasy, kind of chill vibe. Just kind of when you walk in, you don't feel like you're in a trailer and just be able to enjoy a cigar and enjoy the journey of a cigar while you're in here and hmm? not realize that you're inside a trailer. No. We're inside, and uh, as you can see, our cousin Frank is on the outside. But let's introduce ourselves. We kind of jumped in, but we did a little feedback. Welcome, everybody, to the uh, pre-Chicago International Pipe Show here. I'm Ronnie Pecorini. Next to me is my cousin, retired Bob, who actually my flew cousin? up. Cousin? My cousin? Retired cousin? Yeah. Drink! Oh, my cousin! Drink! Drink. Drink. Everybody oh. got that? Oh. Bob and Frank are up here to try to drink. And next How to, you doing, uh, folks? <laughs> next to retired Bob is the president of the Chicago Pipe Club, Tim Garrity. He has know, nothing folks? to say, which is unbelievable. Yeah, I'm, really. enjoying, I'm enjoying a pipe. I got some Drew Estate toasted black Cavendish, circa 2014. So, oh, uh, ten-year-old, and it does smell delicious. When you're I mean, when you're in a in a place like this, you got to bring your tobacco game up. So, well, you did. Yeah. And then we have. One of the partners, because the other partner, Mike, said hello, everyone. Mike's online. But we have Brian Joy sitting here in yeah, his everybody. amazing cigar lounge, mobile cigar lounge. Big fellas, mobile cigar lounge. It says it right there. Right there, yeah. man. Well, okay, right I, I there. forgot the name. So big fellas, all right? Well, I don't think big they fellas, could... big fellas, big fellas. Yeah. Everybody by the end of tonight's going to know big fellas cigar lounge. That's all yeah, I can right. tell you, man. Yeah, you. So welcome, everyone. Thank you. Uh, we are fired up. I mean, Bob and Frank came up from Florida to do this show. Yeah. And it's an all-day affair. Now, all of a sudden, I got no sounds. All-day, all-week affair. And Bob doesn't travel, as you all know. But for this occasion, he has come up. Because uh, this is my Chicago favorite Pipe event. Club this is my itself. favorite event. This is yeah. nothing better than this for me. 
If you had good sex, this is good sex for Bob. This is yeah. orgasmic. All right. This is it. Truly orgasmic. And this is the best high. He doesn't even need a blue pill this whole week. He, he, his Woody is standing forward. I can tell you that. 15 years, I think, I came to this show. And every year, uh, I just 17, went home. But who's counting? 17? Yeah, you're getting old. 17. <laughs> and every year, I just went home and said, that was wonderful. I can't wait for next year. And that was always the thing, you know? I can't wait for next year's show. And this one, I think, is going to be the biggest huh? and the best. I well, truly before, believe it. Whatever you guys put together, no, this is it. I think before we even get into the show, we need to talk about the big fella mobile cigar. Yeah, let's talk yeah. about this a little more. Yeah, yeah I want to talk about that. Yeah. Well, you can see, if you look folks on the other side, Frank, Cousin Frank is just doing a, a, a video of this place, where we're at, what's going on. Don't look at our old mugs. Take a look at how this lounge is built on the inside, from the tin roof down to the flooring, to the to the leather couches that's in it. They really. Like what about the bar? Look at the counter, which was an old bar. All right, let's talk yeah. about it because it's not carvings. here, so it's up to you. Yeah, no. Nope. Um, so we built this out from shell to what it is now uh, a year ago, and uh, what's the size? It's uh, a 30 foot uh, in post car hauler, is basically what it is. And when we started looking at car haulers, we uh, decided to custom build to the eight foot ceiling. So this was custom built with the height for us. And then uh, we that was just a shell and we added everything into it over about a four month period. Um, and, you know, and like I said before, we wanted to kind of have that speakeasy kind of look. And uh, when you come in and be able to enjoy a cigar and feel like you're in a lounge. Um, the original thought, my thought, was a brick and mortar. And, you know, post COVID, everything, it was kind of decided, well, do I really want that overhead? Do I want to have uh, all the expense of the overhead? And, you know, instead of waiting for people to come to us, why not throw it in a trailer and bring it to the people? So, um, so we do golf outings, weddings, uh, private parties. We do different uh, work with local establishments doing, you know, like Bloody Mary's and cigar mornings and uh, just whatever we can do. We're, we're there and we're, uh, fully rentable and, uh, you know, any corporate events or things like that. So tell the people, how can they hook up with you in case they have a special event? First of all, how far of a radius do you travel before you get people wanting in, uh, you know, I don't know, California maybe. I don't know. How far do you go? We'll go to Florida first. Right now we're just licensed in the state of Illinois. I have a full tobacco retailer license. Um, So uh, Illinois, um, you know, we're looking at getting Indiana since we're, I'm actually working from Yankee Key. So, um, you know, we're, 20, 30 minutes from the border of Indiana, so I'm working on trying to get you know, uh, our, our license for Indiana, and you know we'll, we'll move forward with that. Um, where we do a couple different events, um, one that might extend us out into some other uh, other venues and areas. Uh, we worked last year with the Rat Rod Magazine um, on their Rat Stock event, and uh, now they're doing a Rat Rod tour possibly next year. So uh, we're we're looking to. You know, I'd love to go on tour with them with the trailer, and they do different stops throughout the throughout the period. Last year, they did a uh, event from Mitchell, Nebraska, to Cycle Silo. Oh over, wow! And uh, yeah. they stopped every night, and it would have been cool just to go out to Mitchell, Nebraska, and then follow the the tour back. You know, that's with everybody. Really. So that's something we're looking at. And, uh, Are you going to do right something now, for the Rat Rat uh, events? Are you going to like? paint this thing flat black and flare out the fenders. Right. And- <laughs> Actually, I'd like to get a, you know, a nice hot rod, right, right truck to pull this old truck. That would be cool. That would be know, cool. Or some type of... Uh, right know, there. See that on the right. picture? Get that, man. Right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> some, some probably a little bit bigger than that, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's uh, where Illinois is kind of where we're at right now. Okay. Yeah. okay. So it's basically within this state, but yeah. any anywhere in the yeah, state, pretty right? Much anywhere in the state. I mean, we'll travel and you, you know, reach out to us. We uh, you can get a hold of us through our Facebook page, Big Fellows Mobile Cigar Lounge. Uh, you can email us at bookings at Big Fellows Mobile Cigar Lounge, and our website is Big Fellows Mobile Cigar Lounge dot com. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the way. To this is all them. year. All year. Okay. Well, yeah, we kind of we work kind of last year up until about October, um, November. Did a few things and then uh, kicked it back off. Uh, well, that's when you had you had south, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, right. <laughs> you worked all year. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that, that's a possibility, you know. Frank, I see your hand. It's your hand. The other hand. You're holding it. You, there you go. You opened up the view. <laughs> Here's cousin Frank. He has to get in on the picture. He wanted to show his face, but it looked like his hand was going to be his face. So, uh, 
Brian, you and your brother, or, and who else? How yeah. did, uh, who, who's like the leader of the pack here? Who put this idea together? Or both of you just chilling? He would, and I would say I did. You know, this was kind of a, a, a dream that I had, um, like I mentioned, you know, brick and mortar or some sort. And then, uh, but a few years ago, had had seen a couple things and and thought, man, boy, what about a trailer? My original thought was an airstream. Oh, um, oh, and, uh, oh wow! Know, they, I like that. Uh, that might still be, a, uh, you know, maybe the second trailer. The, second, the next trail, one. But the uh, um, just the one that to, you have from November. To right. March right. down so south. Down. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Down yeah. You there so, you go. Um, but yeah, you know, that was uh, the original thought, but trying to find one. And then in the Midwest, you know, those things are so hard to keep polished and clean. And, Florida, so there's, but, there's lots full of Airstream. Well, Airstream is down there. Yeah. yeah. It's unbelievable. But yeah. so just, just throwing it out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, me. I mean, you know, I have to convince my wife. And, <laughs> But this is a fantastic uh, concept. It really is. I mean, we've seen mobile lounges, but they are just that. A little tiny mobile lounge. Where you, you don't even go in. Can basically, you, you point, just you you point to the cigar. The guy hands it to you. You know, yeah. this is, I think, what you wanted, you accomplished, except it's on wheels. Yeah. You know, this is the brick and mortar that moves around. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. The decor is fantastic. It, it's old school. It uh, really gives you that 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 old gentleman's club type of feel, you right. know? That's kind of right. I like the fireman uh, uh, <laughs> little delicacies. I'll talk about the fireman stuff. <laughs> so the, uh, I, I originally, the whiskey barrel, the blue line whiskey barrel, um, my wife gave me that as a gift. I'm previous law enforcement and private security. And, well, thank you um, for your service. Thanks, no problem. So that was kind of, we put it on that side, and then uh, after we had it in here, somebody was like, well, you need something for the fire service. And then, <laughs> You know, uh, being being a brother of blue, you know, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you know, yeah, we yeah. ended up uh, one of our local uh, fire chiefs from a volunteer department. Uh, my brother did some work for him, and he gave us that hat. So we decided to display Why it on not? this side. That's so very cool. We got the the uh, blue line flag, got our blue line flag on this side, and the, the fire service on this side. You know, we we support all. You know, first responder, military, everybody. Uh, you know, we're all we're all in it together. Yeah. So. Now, is that a real fireplace, or is that just a fake one? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a, a great idea. Absolutely. I mean, you, you guys go to every little detail. And I like this feature. The, the doors, which give you, again, an open feeling, and you got a little patio outside. Right. Uh, I mean, you thought of everything. We tried to think of, you know, that was wasted space if we just would have put a... You know, it's put not. A it, so, it's it's a, you know, a patio that you can hang out with yeah. an umbrella. And, yeah, so we put a table out there with four chairs, and, you know, it's it's great for music venues when we're we're at different music concerts. Um, it's kind of, you know, up a couple feet from everybody, so it's a great people watching spot, you know, so sit there, have a cigar, and people watch, and different You venues. know, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second, yeah. because this is very impressive. But you also impressed me with something else. Would you mind bringing some of your carvings, oh, your pipes Frank, over here? Bring his carvings. I, I, I really, I want people to see it because I'm very impressed with what you made, man. So this is a guy who went to one thing and had nothing better to do while sitting there relaxing and twiddling his thumbs and uh, shaving some wood. And as a novice. Because that's what he wants to be. He just, I'm just a. And he a just newbie. did this three days ago. He started. <laughs> this, you know, it's just the amazing part. Look at some of the work. You can put that right up against the camera. Here's so, a guy at a pipe show in a cigar lounge, and look at the craftsman that. Uh, look at the quality. Done. So these were done. Uh, my oldest is 15 now, so uh, probably 16, 18 years ago. Uh, we used to camp quite a bit, and. Uh, Got into the niche of I used to go to the tobacco pipe show when it was at uh, Pheasant Run sure. and uh, in St. Charles there, and that's the last time I've been. But the uh, you know started getting into the pipe stuff and smoking cigars back then, and uh, really thought it was kind of intriguing to you know to carve on a piece of wood and make it into a pipe and uh, did a few. But but, I, but people just don't do that normally and produce something of that quality. I thought they were naughty when you opened the box. Yeah. I really great did. free hands. Beautiful, Thank beautiful you. pipes, man. I'm impressed. Yeah, they, uh, it's, it's always been a, a hobby of mine. But, you know, unfortunately, with, with having my three wonderful children, I don't have that time right now, but I'd like to get back there at some point. Mm -hmm. and, but I hope you do. Yeah, don't don't, don't give that up. Yeah. Uh, I won't. No. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Hobby. 
maybe bring, like we talked earlier, a little pipe tobacco here in the, in the uh, cigar lounge. Yeah, sure. that was kind of the plan for this weekend. It just kind of got away, but uh, we might do something like that. And, you know, yeah. Bring in something, bring in a few little pipes and always have something on hand. So. Well, again, a lot of cigar smokers smoke pipes. Yeah. You know, that's, again, you know, tobacco is tobacco. We, yeah. we, we love it. <laughs> well, there's one for each, you know, kind of, you're, if you've got time and you're relaxing, there's nothing better than a pipe, you know, a pipe, a pint, you know. Pipe and pint, yes, 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 I like time. that. But, you know, if you're active, you're you're out with your friends, yeah, cigar's a little bit better, you know. It's a little bit more mobile, a little bit more friendly, but it's always good to, With the you chill, know. you got both. Yeah, I mean, exactly. you can do whatever you want, and, you know, folks, if you're around the Rosemont area, Illinois, you know, it, it's, you got nothing to want to do you're looking for something to do just come on down man man i don't come care if they have down. something to do cancel it and come it's here, here. Absolutely. this is the happening man brian what hours <laughs> are you going to be from tonight all the way through sunday what are the hours are you going to hang out with I, you know we're going to the smoking tents open from 6 a.m to 2 a.m yeah, so it is. Uh, you know we'll, we'll play it as as long as we can and um you know kind of slows down and uh, you know we'll, we'll close up shop but yeah. if uh you know it's busy and it's rolling why hey, not? We're here. We got the outdoor seating, like uh, you've seen, and yep, Frank right. showed you guys the outdoors a little yeah. earlier, and uh, twenty hours worth of cigars in here alone, if you want, guys, right. ladies, whatever. And the humidor is packed with good stuff. I mean, it, yes. you, you know, you don't have to, you know, junky cigars. Right. This is this is great cigars in there. So, Thanks. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, you know, I tried to. It started off with I was only going to have about twenty to thirty facings, and then you know that's hard to do when you try to. <laughs> You know, doing a lot of venues and doing try to please not please a lot of have people. For Do you uh, have the cigar? Yeah. Right. You know, right. of course. Yeah. No, yeah. I'll get it next week though. Right. <laughs> so but you're not going to find backwoods here, folks. Right. Yeah. No uh, backwoods. We actually started with the first humidor, and uh, we had so much requests for some of the sweeter stuff that we ended up putting the smaller humidor in next to it. Uh, about two months, three months later, you so might need another one. Right. Folks, yeah. Frank's on I, right I, now. I, can Frank. you guys can, hear him? Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, there he is. Can you hear me? Louder, yeah, can you guys okay, hear me? He so Frank is yeah. sitting uh, outside, outdoor, and look at the setup that Brian and Mike has put together out here. And he doesn't uh, have like what do you got? Eight chairs? Like like Ten those chairs? metal folding chairs. He's got like twelve chairs. Beautiful chairs out there. Club chairs and I mean really nice stuff. Yeah. Look, look at the detail on this t table right here. Okay, we can hear him. Look at the details that he's got going on. We yeah, that's a friends. place, uh, a live edge that we uh, my edge. picked up on a, on a bike trip, actually, and uh, we were thinking of trying to put something out there table-wise, and he, you know, put the gas pipe on it and made a table out of it, and works well for everybody sitting out there. Nice, nice thick piece of wood out there to put all your, your stuff on while you're sitting there for... Yeah, these are nice pieces. Do you uh, do logging in on the side too, or <laughs> uh, where'd you get these pieces of wood? <laughs> Believe it or not, the uh, local hardware store holes. You know, we, really. Uh, he went in and found one, and then we originally had just one there, and then we decided to add another to do the whole the blend side. Blend right in. Yeah. One of the. But it's still got like uh, the bark and stuff on yeah, it. Yeah, the live edge. It's pretty yeah. cool. It's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Very really nice. Oh, Frank, did you get a chance? I know you're hearing us. What's that? I we hear you. We have the request over yeah. my yeah. audience yeah. Nice. Nice. to okay. uh, show the facings again that in the lounge. I know yeah. we did it earlier. Yeah. We're getting mm -hmm. people that really, now that we talked about the humidor, Frank, they will like to see all the facings again. All right. So, folks, you can see Frank walking around on the outside. Yeah. But, Brian, this is uh, really awesome, man. I mean. Thanks. We Appreciate can't thank you enough for coming up, especially tonight, to do the live show sitting in here. And uh, we absolutely uh, are in awe. I mean, no, <laughs> it, it's right the classiest man. one I've ever seen. Thanks. I really have to say that. I, I've never seen anything better. No. I, no, I, just, I, I opened up I'm, the show saying this is the meanest, baddest, fucking greatest mobile lounge. Yeah, ever. man. You're <laughs> thinking about having a bachelor party? Why? Oh, God. oh yeah. I mean, how about a bachelorette party? Bachelorette party. Have bachelor. the women in here. Well, you know, and then you can come right. in and do, you and, know, and, and you can screw in pole, pole right yeah. over here. Yeah. <laughs> They'll pay me to put my clothes back. That's all. We'll uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, right. the, the pole. That's not for Festivus. Oh, that what it is? <laughs> We're going to have a Chippy Tim Dale here over here. But uh, no, uh, it is great. Everybody, no, I'm just saying, like, if, you look, if, 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 if you get a chance, you know, it is like an old fashioned like tobacco store, it's got the tin roof. You know, you got the wood paneling. 
It's kind of like going back like 120 yep. years. Speaking of yeah, you know? old school stuff. But it's like, 20s. You know, yeah. like, so do you have a website for booking? Like, tell us about how, like, okay, so how a bunch of buddies want to get together and how yeah. do they do that? Yeah, so they follow us at mobilecigarlounge.com and, uh, or, um, if you go to our Facebook page and go to Linktree, it's got all of our stat, all of our social media stuff on there. Uh, multiple, you know, we put, uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, we do all that, the social stuff. So, um, so you can find us in many ways. But yeah, it's got links on there, and, uh, information and ways to get a hold of me and my brother. And, yeah, and if somebody wants to book you, what is the booking time? Like, how 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 early should they call you? Do a month beforehand or? Uh, you know, a few months prior, a year prior. You know, a right year now, prior. I mean, we're, 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 I'm starting to book stuff for for next year already. I'm booking stuff into late October already. I mean, wow. not to say that we don't have days and weekends available, but right. uh, we do a lot of golf outings. So a lot of golf outings are, you know, weekdays, Tuesday, Thursday, Fridays, things like so that. So Peter's out around late October yeah. anyway. So, but um, yeah, we still got a few weekends available this year and a few things uh, open. So uh, you know, if you're looking for this year still, we still have some some availability and. Uh, you know, love to, Beautiful. Love to be there for you. Yeah. Guys, you know, you. It's, some, it, it's definitely a um, worth the trip, no matter where they are. Go to the website, check out where they are. Golf is coming up, so you're going to find them at golf courses. Look at all that. Yeah, right. we do a couple. Weddings. 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 Bring this right well, to the I wedding. Don't want all I people mean, crashing the wedding, but no, no, no. no. But you bring right. this right yeah. to the wedding, you know. You know? <laughs> We're doing four big public events. Uh, we got three music fests that are going on down, you know, in so, like the south suburbs. Uh, Bradley 315 Fest, the, there's a Watsika Fest, Virtual Street Music Fest. And then we're also doing the Rat Stock event with uh, Rat Ride Magazine again this year. Um, and that's in uh, mid September over Psycho Silo there. So, oh, so yeah, that's, that's a great fest. place. Yeah. Psycho Silo is yeah. out of this world. I'll, I'll tell you I've what. We've been there with my biker group, and my wife and I. That That's. We had a great time. If you love, but if you can't, it's it's pebble driveway. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> so right. go slow. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's kind of why they, you know, the, the rat rods. You don't want to bring your nice car over. Oh, there. Yeah, they, uh, they, uh, they do the rat rod events, and uh, they're actually, I think, if I remember right, there's like 200 new rat rods being built for this this build off. Really? Wow. So they're going to have any any particular everything. big names doing it, or? Uh, it's Rat Rat Magazine that puts it on. The magazine itself, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Jerry Ripley from Rat Rat Magazine. Yeah, yeah. very cool. There's that certain group yeah. that go handle that yeah. for sure. You got to be part of that group yeah. and know what's going That's on. That's a big event. And then, like I said, we do some music fest. And, you know, if you've got a music, if you got a music fest in your area, and, you know, uh, reach well, out to Well, if me. you went to Florida, there's 150 bands playing at uh, the uh, Speedway in Daytona. Yeah. 150 bands. That's well, going to be a huge Mike event. Joyner, Troy, Mike Joyner, wow. did you hear wow. that? Mike Joyner, did you hear that? Going to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hello, Vic Shaw, my man. We'll see you in a couple of days, Vic. And, of course, we have our crazy, crazy uh, New Jersey Saj. Saj. Yeah. Saj. Saj fuckers is, uh, are here, Saj. We uh, hear you. I read what you wrote. We're here just for you. Everybody else, thanks so much for joining us, man. Everybody. Oh, Mike said, let's go. Let's he go. gave you the okay, so oh, you go. Yeah. Let's go. Hey. <laughs> All right. We'll leave from here. <laughs> you know, it's not far. Right from here. Head on down. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate you coming up for this. Uh, yeah. You, you, you're going to have a yeah. table inside, but. You're set right next to our 4,000 square foot smoking tent, folks. And it is the Chicago International Pipe Show, 25 plus years right here in Rosemont. Bigger it's, and better than ever. Yeah, It's going to be the hottest show in Chicagoland this week. So if you haven't bought a ticket yet on Zephy, then you got to come here in person and you got to come in, man. I mean, it, we're going to talk to our president, Tim Garrity. Tim Garrity, what in the world is going on here in Rosemont, brother? Oh, well, hold on. We're getting a little sign. Keep going. Oh, we're going to sponsor. Yeah, we're going to do sponsor. Oh, I didn't know we had oh, Okay. Well, so, you know, sponsors. before we get to right. I didn't know we could do the sponsors on here. We're not at home, you know. We're not in the studio. They say free. All right. Spot everybody. <laughs> the sponsors are coming up. Grab yourself your sick, you know, grab yourself your spirit, and let's have some fun. And Bruce, if you got to go to the bathroom, go now. <laughs> All right. Take it away, Frank. Great cigars take time. 
The Fortaleza Libre story began in 2013 with the idea of starting a brand of cigars that would exemplify the strength and freedom that define America. Our premium cigar voyage for quality and taste led us to the Dominican Republic and the tobacco fields of Santiago and Tamboril. Tabacalera El Joyito would become a trusted partner and in 2019, our smoking strong and living free journey was realized with the arrival to our shores of the Fuerte Libre Bodacious. Fast forward five years, 2024, Fuerte El Libre rebrands to Fuerteleza El Libre. Same meaning, strong and free. Our portfolio has grown to six core lines to satisfy the palates of cigar smokers worldwide. For more information, visit our website at FYLCigars.com. Smoke strong, live free. Welcome to GTO Dominican Cigars, a boutique cigar company that artfully blends and creates some of the finest handmade puros from the Sabao Valley in the Dominican Republic. We are fourth generation manufacturers and growers of tobacco with over 140 years of experience offering a variety of styles, blends, and strengths. Mild, medium, medium plus, and full bodied. We would truly consider it an honor for you to experience our cigars. Those who know, smoke GTO. Before you light your next cigar, be sure to check out Cigar Medics, the makers of the patent-approved Humidimeter. The Humidimeter is a tool designed to display the relative humidity inside your cigar. With this device, there's no more guessing. Simply insert the probes into the foot or cap of your cigar, and you can instantly know if your cigar is ready to be smoked. Buy now on CigarMedics.com and see site for other cigar accessories. With the humidimeter, you'll know when to hold them and know when to smoke them. Years in the making, the Chief Cigar was born, blended, boxed, and released to market on June 26, 2015. This cigar was developed by former fire chief, firefighter, cigar aficionado, Ken Dorbecker, and has grown into a signature firehouse cigar line. Including, of course, The Chief, a Nicaraguan Habano blend, Proby, a Connecticut Shade blend, All Hands, a Maduro Mexican San Andreas box press, and the brand new Fire Pole, a beautifully crafted San Andreas Habano barber pole. Join The Chief family and make us part of your humidor. R&A Treasures, out of Tampa Bay, Florida. The last of a legacy the last of an inventory of Thomas Cristiano in a warehouse where everything is aged and well kept for all your pipe and smoking needs. And you want to talk about? we're back, folks. <laughs> we're here at Big Fella's Mobile Cigar Lounge and having a fantastic time in a, 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 a space that has taken us back to 1920s. Uh, but we're going to talk now to the president of oh, the Chicago Pipe Club here, and the man who's lead, led us to this wonderful location here in Rosemont after 25 years. This is a new venue. Tim Garrity, take it away. Thanks, Ronnie. Ooh. Well, I mean, coming to the Rosemont, uh, the Hyatt Regency O'Hare, the decision, you know, a lot of times what people don't appreciate about putting on a show, we're in a very... Uh, hostile state towards tobacco and you know we, we we all get it you know but you know i have a very simple saying leave me my choice of poisons you know um and unfortunately there's too many states with yeah. this attitude and, so and, and you know so trying to get a show together in the first place is hard pheasant run was our home for a long time because well you know they were going through a hard time and we helped keep them afloat we were there their Pretty largest much. show for 15 years. Um, but then COVID hit and we had to shut down reluctantly. And, you know, we had to go shopping for. Well, not because of right? COVID. The basic Pheasant Run has burnt down, well, was torn down. Well, it was down. <laughs> but, you know, anyway, 
So we shopped around and, you know, we, we tried out the Marriott Lincolnshire and it was a good location, good people. Um, you know, we just couldn't get our dates to line up. And I was thinking we need a place that has the space and the Hyatt Regency O'Hare, well, we have the space. The, the hotel itself has plenty of room for our show um, with, room, with room to grow. You know, and Ron, being the uh, new show director, say hi, Ron. Hi, Ron. Oh. So, <laughs> you know, um, year after year, you know, the show changed, it grew, it shrank. Um, and Ron and I and the board of directors thought it was time that we really try to bring back some of our original format, which was educational. Um, and trying to, pe to educate people in the culture of tobacco. So the culture of tobacco, Ronnie's really done a great job when we're talking about the cigar part of it, because let's face it, you know, cigars are very popular, you know, and, and the, the fact of the matter is a cigar sells itself. Yes. Okay. Yeah. A good cigar doesn't need a sales rep. It, it, it does its own. And people forget that there's still pipe tobacco out there, right. you know, but there's a large following and we have a lot, huge history behind us of culture pipe, you know, pipe, the tobacco growing, carving. So all of those things we're trying to really revive. You know, we've had the pipe carving seminar, which Alan Boyd, you know, and Jeff Grasick have put on for us for a very long time um, in many different formats, was led by many different great carvers through the years, you know, and we've kept that in place. Um, and with Jeff Grasick's help and Alan's help, it's been great. We have Pipe Making 101. And right. pipe making 201, the next level, you know. And in the meantime, we brought in some more of our workshops, how to clean your own pipe, which was a great thing. I remember when I was new to the show, going back a long time now, um, you know, Chuck Chuck Ray or Chip used to show up at the show, and he would teach you how to clean your pipe. Total restoration work. That's history. That's like, you know, old time, and my grandfather would always clean his pipes. You know, yeah, and, but, but I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, even someone who has been a pipe smoker for many, many years, I, I, and I'm guilty of this, for many, many years, I thought like cleaning your pipe was taking some of that bee pipe cleaner fluid mm -hmm. that they used to sell in the little uh, plastic jar and running your pipe cleaner through it with that on it. Right. You know, and I thought, oh, that's it. It was like some sort of weird sweetener. But there is so much to cleaning the pipe properly and then mm -hmm. to restore if you're going into estate pipes. I mean, you know, you and I have done this for many years yeah. now, but, but yeah, matter fact, some people don't know anything about that. You know, they Bobby don't. here fixed my head up. <laughs> I, if, for those of you who know pipes, I had a Dunhill Red Bark Oda, which is a very large pipe and it had a crack in it, you know, and I, you know, I got nice pipes and I got worker pipes. And I'm like, eh, I'm going to get rid of this. And Bobby, Bobby, yeah, Bobby's no. like, <laughs> no. Bobby looks at it, he's like, no, I'll, I'll fix it. He did, a, he did a quick mud job on it, which is basically a little process of basically shoring up the, the crack. Things my, I call it my $200 Missouri Meerschaum. You know, it's like, you know. It, but, hey, it was a little more than that. You're filling in the crack. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just, just, like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. You got some go stone haven out of it. You're okay. You're okay. You're <laughs> okay. Right? But the whole point of coming here to the High Regency O'Hara is, is that we are centrally located. We're one block away from the Blue Line. You can take that right downtown Chicago. We're in walking distance of, of Rosemont's Entertainment District for bars, restaurants. You even got a skydive Chicago if you want to go into indoor skydiving, you know. You and if you're a gambler, there's a yeah, casino right down a, the road. It was know, 15 minutes to the airport. Yeah, you know, so well, there's a, a free shuttle, shuttle, shuttle bus from the, air, from the hotel <laughs> to the airport. Yeah. I mean, come on, folks. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the whole point, and, you know, Ron could testify this just as much as I can, it takes a whole team of people to really put all the place, the pieces in place, you know, and the most important piece next to our vendors are our guests. Okay. It, you know, so if you're in the Chicagoland area, if you're in the tri-state area, you've got a couple hours to burn, come on out because this is it, folks. This is the largest pipe 
show in the, the world. world. Okay. No, uh, and, it, and, and it's going to be better than everyone from the past. Well, I mean, because of what you guys have implemented into the show now, there's so many more new things to keep people busy. You yeah, know, you're not yeah. just coming here and, and buying some tobacco and sitting in a tent smoking to death. You know, I mean, just go to our website. It's yeah. one yeah. one yeah. Uh, clinic after another. I mean. I don't think it's it's ever been done before. Yeah, well, I don't think to this capacity. Well, we're and trying to do. Say this. Okay. I want to say this to the moron who spread news uh, some time ago, who said that the Chicago Pipe Show was dead. That's You're number you, one, buddy. You're number one. <laughs> You're dead weight. <laughs> Listen, you know, just because of COVID, uh, yeah, we had it, unfortunately stopped the show for two years. Not of our own doing. Yeah, this is the stopped. state no, it's and the government, okay? Right. We were back two years ago at Marriott Lincolnshire for the last two years to restart, reboot this yeah, program. We got new leadership. We got now we're we're growing to yeah, you I young see. ones who yeah, are now yeah. picking up the pipe, you know, because the generation of pipe smokers has now changed a lot to more people between twenty five and forty five. A lot you of picked up lot of where the sixty five and the RIPs that are on the ground right now because you're getting old and we, it, there is a change. There's a change right now. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I actually had people come in here, younger, 25 to 45, 35, that are, you know, asking us if we have pipes, if we're selling pipe tobacco, because, yeah, the younger generation is coming around and wanting to get more involved in the pipe industry. And Absolutely. So, yeah. Which is wonderful, really. Yeah, it's great we, well, we've seen it for years, yeah. the past five or six years, I would say, at the show. All of a sudden, you're seeing people in their 20s, and they're not, you can tell they're just not there saying, oh, you know, should I buy it? They they had knowledge. They were they were really focused in on what they wanted. They knew something about the briar, you know. They had an education mm -hmm. in, in pipes, yeah. which is fantastic. I mean, it's it's a change of the guard, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and speaking of that, you know, we should mention, you know, in honor of the passing of our second show director, Craig Cobine passed away within the last few weeks, and Craig was, you know, ran the show for a very long time. You know, and help keep us keep the show running. You know, in a hostile environment. You gotta, you know, what we tend to forget is Frank Burla started the show, and Frank, when he had the show, you could smoke on the showroom floor. Remember that? Absolutely. Right? You know, and then Illinois went, you know, anti-smoking and got rid of that, and they had to transition. And in it, inadvertently, yeah. they brought in something that has. Help the show the, the show grow in a different way, and that is the tent, because the tent gives you one place to come together yep. and socialize and talk all things absolutely tobacco yep. and you know also you know just talk to your fellow enthusiasts. So you know Craig helped transition that. You know it was in between Frank and Craig that we were able to transition from a state that allowed us to smoke to a state that hated smokers. You know and. But those days when Frank had it, and, and this was still friendly to tobacco, I mean, how, how could you top the fact that you go from, from vendor to vendor and just fill up your pipe and try the tobacco right on the spot, you know? I mean, it was like, wow. <laughs> That's what I remember the, yeah. from Pheasant Run. Yep. I mean, I walked away with a bag of tobacco. That oh, yeah, shopping bags. Yeah, shopping <laughs> bag. I mean, I had samples after samples after bag. Correct. Like, and, and what I remember was like you know you don't see a lot of pipe advertised pipe tobacco advertised. No. It was more of a word of mouth and a sample. That's how you got your, you know, that's how they advertise. Yep. And one of the things I found, uh, which was better in that aspect, was when you had the, the the sample that you were able to go right to the table and sample it. You made note and made notes of that tobacco, which kind of it's a little bit um, difficult to do now. Because, you know, you're in the tent and, yeah, there's the samples there, but, you know, you need to write it down in a bag. And you still don't have that manufacturer in front of you where you have that personal rapport like right. you did years ago. So it makes it a little harder, but But, but, but you, know, you know, we're spoiled. Hold on. We're we spoiled, spoiled in Chicago. We are spoiled. We're in Chicago, we're spoiled. You know, we got Ewan Reese. We got Arlington Pipe and Cigar. We've got a couple other nice little 
places out Norwood there. Norwood Royal yeah, Cigars you know, and Norwood. Well, yeah, uh, Norwood. I mean, you know, if you're looking for great cigars, I mean, they, they're walking humidor. It's the forget largest, it. the biggest in Chicago, it. right? Bring, bring a lawn chair, uh, all right, and just hang out for the day or two. Because that's how many cigars they got. Yeah, Lake yeah. Shaw has got you a know? place that you can't be beat as far as selection and the the just the size of the humidor itself is spectacular. Yeah, yeah bring your debit card when you go yeah. there. But the thing is, what, what's going on now with our show, folks, is we're trying to basically get back to our roots, teaching people our culture, our heritage, our history, you know, bring them into, you know, the fellowship of the leaf you know it's what binds and unites all of us in that you know um you know i enjoy really good cigars and you know i've relied on this show for years you know i've never had a cigar from one of their vendors that steered me wrong you know um i could give a shout out to big country gto oh, yeah. I mean, dr kathy I and mean, i've had some great cigars you know, well, for, that I would we're not going be six years to, now, and you know? we have exposed the world and 75 countries now about the cigar industry and a boutique cigars in particular. But of course, we have uh, Oliva, which we're smoking right now. Thank you, yeah. Brian. I always like Brian. Great cigar. I mean, great the best, cigar. That's wow. the best one. Sorry, folks. The best c cigar show ever was with Brian dissected. I don't care. I don't uh, care for all y'all. That was the best show <laughs> because he took it leaf by leaf, and this is how we make an Oliva. You know, and it teach it taught me. It's like I've, I've enjoyed cigars for years, not as much as everybody else, but it's like hey, there's a good cigars, a good cigar. Yeah. But he's like. It didn't just get that way because he just rolled a bunch of the leaves right, together. Right, right. There was a whole thought process. There you is. Know? And it's the same thing with pipe tobacco. When you're talking to the blenders, um, you know, we're going to have some of the world's best. So, what are, yeah. so our events. Let's talk about the events and we'll build up to where you are. All right. Well, well, so, I'm, folks, I'm in the for you first timers that don't Cicada. know anything That's where I'm at. about the Chicago International Pipe Show, on Wednesday and Thursday, we start off the show with an actual pipe making class that uh, Tim mentioned, class 101 and 201. And we've got an amazing car, Jeff Krasik, along with uh, his helpers that are going to be sitting by you side by side, showing you how to make your own cigars in two days. They're eight hour classes every day. And, you know, it's just fabulous for anybody who ever wanted to know how to make a cigar. How can you not attend the class? And here you are. You can see Frank just posted a picture of a bunch of our uh, our fellow it's, smokers, it's and, pipes, uh, and they're cigar. making uh, Make your pipes, pipes, pipes. You making cigars. Pipe. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we got a lot going on. We so got that going on too. Well, that's, that's, that. that's and yeah, we're going to have that. It's going to be making cigars. So Wednesday and Thursday in the morning. Then we have. Uh, Ish Adelan, uh coming in to do cigar rolling. We're actually having classes on cigar rolling on Thursday night, folks. We still, you can still get tickets. So go on Zephy, and if you get here first thing Wednesday or Thursday morning, ask Vera and Teresa if they can, uh, if you can get into it, and we'll make room for you to roll your own cigars. Three of them. Side by side with Oscar and uh, I believe his main man, Carlos, and you can roll three cigars for only $30. You get to experience a rolling cigar situation. Make your, own, make your mean, own stick for $10, $10 a pop. I mean, I come on. <laughs> I mean, honestly, think about it, right? All right? And then we also have uh, Jamie Connolly, where we started how to maintain your, and clean your own pipe. Jamie Conley. Now, and Jamie, it, of course, is, is a master in pipe repairs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Will he be doing anything on that? He's working the shop. He's working mm -hmm. on teaching people how to make uh, uh, pipes with Jeff. Yeah, I know, but is he also doing no. pipe repair work? No, no, it's just basically it's a nice, basic how to clean and restore your pipes. Okay. You know, and it's a great connection to make because Jamie, Jamie does all my repair work. Um, you know, 
So whenever I buy collections, I, I turn to him because he's got the equipment and the know-how. You know, um, also, you know, so that's just that's just one night. That's April 11th. You got a cigar rolling. You got a pipe maintenance class. You got the pipe making seminar just on one day. You know, and then on the 12th, the tent opens up officially. It'll be open bright and early. Um, and it's like just want you to think about one big social event. Absolutely. It's it's an opportunity that we're not trying to distract you from hanging out with your friends. We want you to come, get to know the place, get to know the tent. Touch yeah, look, look online, friends. folks. What you're looking at is last year at Marriott, the tent. All right. Now that tent was three thousand square feet. Not this good, year good. outside up, right, right now is four thousand. And next year's show, we're going to be 6000 okay? So as long as you people want to come, we'll provide the space for yeah. you. You Remember get there, that. we'll do the rest. You know? And, and we also have some master blenders. Well, Pierre, Jeremy Pierre, Reed from Cornell and Deal will be here. Pierre, Pierre, Bill, um, Pierre from uh, McBaron Tobacco. Pierre Bill, I, I'm sorry if I'm saying his name, Ron. Um, you can we'll, be me. Sutliff is here, right? <laughs> so Love here you. we'll be teaching people how to make their own blends. Um, basically, you know, showing them how the process is done, um, which is, again, pipe culture. This is pipe tobacco yes. culture, how to make your own blend. I, I, you know, I'm, we have passed the Zenith day when you used to walk into the Dunhill store give them your name, and they'd give you your own blend. Oh, yeah. I remember you know, those days. You know, oh, my German. God. New York, Bob, but back also, in New York City. You know, on the 12th, Alex Florov, if you don't know Alex, Alex is one of the world's great pipe makers, is basically going to be talking about doing a freehand for him. Um, I'm lucky enough to have one of his pipes, and the, the, the mind that goes behind just creating a freehand pipe, yep. you know, um, and Alex has a very unique style. Well, you got that mind. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, 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 again, yep. you know, it's, they look like classic Danish they freehands, do. you know? Spectacular. It, yeah. Um, but it's full day from 10 o'clock on Friday. Um, Friday is on. Friday, we are game on, folks. 8 o'clock yeah. Friday night. Well, let's talk about this. The next is the Chinese pipe culture and market. Here's one of the things. A lot of people, you know, China is a huge booming market. And, and this is just my opinion, and I'm entitled to it. You are. They are keeping pipe tobacco alive. Pipe tobacco? Yes, because, number one, like I, everybody in here who smokes a cigar, you're familiar with the Cameroon wrapper. Of course. Well, that wasn't grown in Cuba or Nicaragua. It was no. grown in Cameroon. You know, the, the Chinese are consuming, they're getting into pipe culture. Now, number one. They have a very long tradition of pipe use of course. and pipe tobacco and their own culture. But also some of their carvers, you know, um, Ping is like one of these people who's made pipes that are just flowing. They just have this flow to them and symmetry of beauty and grain. And I just want to hear what, what's going on in their part of the world. Right. Mm. Because you know? as we know. The Chinese have certainly made a major impact in this industry. Yeah. They really are buying everything up. Well, they've been doing that for years. I mean, we okay. used to comment well, about that Frank 15 years ago. Wow. Look at look at how much but, they're buying and shipping back to China. But, but you know? look at what they're making, too. This is the thing. It's like, you know, it used to be that it's like they were just buying. Now they're making. Well, they, they bought, they learned, and yeah. now they're making themselves. Yeah. You know? And I've seen some some carvers from China that their their craftsmanship is just mind-boggling. Absolutely. You know? So, you know, it, we're, a, we're a community, you know, and this is the international yeah, pipe right. show. So, you know, it's, you know, it's good to have people from China – from Singapore, well, around the world. First from of Australia. Of all, folks, oh, you're going to find people from around the world here. People from week. Turkey, from right. Italy, I mean, France. I mean, you name it. This, it's it's around yeah, the world. It's amazing. It's around the world. Tim, you mentioned about the Chinese connection that we're having this year. Uh, we've got some major buyers and we got some major carvers. Ping is bringing 200 of his pipes to be on the table, folks. Wow. 200 car pipes is coming in. Nice. And... Because they really want 
to thank us for bringing and letting them, number one, I guess. But 18 of those, 20 pipes are being donated to us. 18 of them are going to be at our silent auction. Wow. For you to also bid on to try to win. 18 of those pipes. One pipe will also go to the winner of the 50-50 raffles. If you lose, keep your ticket because all tickets bought on the 50-50 will be in the box for the winner for that one extra pipe carved by Ping. And then one other pipe will be given away at our awards evening uh, on Saturday. So yeah. and uh, we're not, we haven't even scratched the surface yet. So the Chinese yeah. are bringing not only a class on pipe culture in their part of the world, but also their carving, their tobacco. So we've got a unique opportunity here to learn about another branch of our family. You know, um, also um, we have some great speaking seminars. So you have the life you save may be your own thoughts on this or on pipe smoking and the contemplative lifestyle. Come on, when you're enjoying a pipe, yeah, you, you sit back and you just it's ref, chill. It, it, it's reflect. And Fred you know, Hanna is amazing. Well, Fred's going to be doing Secrets of the Smoke Sublime. Yes. And if you know Frank, you know, if you know Fred, sorry. Fred. Looking at Frank. Okay. Here's well, Frank, you know, folks. Fred, Frank. That's there's, Frank. Make there's sure you stand when you're there's here. There's a Frank right there. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, Fred's a great guy. He knows so much about pipes, pipe tobacco, the history, but also, you know, you know, how to make, like, what goes into a great smoke? If you don't know, you know, Fred made some great blends with McClellan's yes. that when you can get your hands on some legends or some wilderness, those are some really good blends, you know. Um, but the thing is, again, you're going to talk to somebody who's a part of the history of making tobacco and what goes into the thought process. Um, and then, you know, to cap it off Friday night, we switch. Is that everything yep. on Friday? Well, there's one last thing. <laughs> we have the Battle of the Briar. So, um, you know, you're going to have Dirk, Dirk Heinemann from Germany. Great carver. You got, if you've ever seen his pipes. All three are on the uh, all right. video right now, right. folks. You got They're Pete all Provost, here. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, a tour de force in modern American pipe making. Um, and Dave S. Huber, who was just here a little while ago hanging out in there. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Dave's pipes are mind-boggling as well. So you got three power carvers for our second annual Battle of the Briar. Yeah. You know, um, Alan and Jeff Grasick have put this idea together, and we're, you know, Ronnie and I have done what we have could to make it happen. You know? I know the great part is when those three finish those pipes in, what, an hour and a half we give them? Yep. An hour and a half, they're going to make those pipes. You get to see them at the silent auction and get to bid on those three pipes. Nice. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, from, I mean, from, personally carved right in front of you, if you especially see the event, because it will be live streamed also. We only got room for 37 people in that room to get a good view, but we'll also have the AV and streamed right into the cigar tent yep. for you to see that. So we're last pulling out year, all those the stops. Were oh, yeah. Well, we hope we did. Yeah. Tim, I think. Well, then we got to cap it off. Has, yeah, go ahead. We yeah. got to cap it off. Friday night, we used to have the, uh, you know, the welcoming dinner. And, you know, and, and a lot of people like to go out. We're also really close to some great restaurants. So we just thought about having a cocktail party. Right. Cocktail on us. On us. Chicago Pipe Club is going to welcome everybody who comes. You're coming upstairs to the Ventana Room. That is a 360 that you can see in the entire Chicago land all out of the windows. And you're going to have that from... Uh, 9 o'clock. We said 11. But we're going to kick you out at 10.30 because of the noise factor. But two and a half to three hours of definitely some cocktails, some hors d'oeuvres, and just great people. Yeah. And, and and then Saturday is the show proper. Yes. Your Saturday and Sunday will be the show proper. Saturday night we will have the Doctor of Pipes. Um, so we'll be handing out awards for those who are, are the movers, the how should I say, like legends? The legends, the of, of legends our community. In the and, and up and coming people too. Yes. We've had some great nominees this year. Um, you know, people you'll be able to see at the show and talk to. Um, I don't know. It's you know, it's hard to kind of encapsulate. We've also 
reincorporated the buy sell swap. Um, you know, it's on Sunday. So first come, first curve, serve basis from three to five. Um, you know, we also brought back room swap, you know, just walk around. Right. You know, you room so on hopping. the fourth floor, especially the fourth floor, we're gonna have what's called the room hopping is back from Pheasant Run to Rosemont. Yeah. All right. And that's basically what that means, folks, is this is not a sexual thing from room hopping. It's about going from room to go? room. Why is it going to go there? Well, you because know, that's wrong. You get to see other people's pipes. <laughs> it's fine. Still going there. And, and there. Smoking pipes. That is. Yeah, just can't stop. <laughs> but really, uh, this when is you what look Teresa at, has to put up with. Right? Teresa, yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah. She's a doll in my book. Yeah. But, <laughs> She's a classy dame. She's a classy She's dame. She's a good broad to me. You know what I mean? Because yeah. hey, she hasn't killed you yet. That's why. She's going to look at you with the broad. Yeah. Hey, bro. I'll get it later. Don't worry about it. I'm on not the second tonight, floor. You know. <laughs> I'll be out the balcony, you know? <laughs> You're waving at me again. But, but honestly, folks, I mean, this is the show shows. The show shows. We did a little something different this year. We did bring in the cigar community for the first time. We used to have cigars back in the day, one or two people. This year, we believe we're at 15 to 20 cigar manufacturers and blenders that will be here because we feel as a community, cigars and pipe tobacco go together. Almost everybody who smokes a cigar, well, smokes pipes, smokes cigars also. And there's no reason why both communities cannot jive together. Well, right? but, you know... If, if there's an old saying with you know rising tide lifts all ships well so does a lowering tide you know when they're going after one they're going after all you know yes. so bobby you know you're living down there in florida nobody spoke up for pipes no we have, a problem, pipe with that. We have a problem with that there's states where you you can't you can't <laughs> ship tobacco to those states um well we got the premium cigar association the pca yeah. and everybody who knows what that is we have Josh, Scott, and Lisa coming, and they're excited for Chicagoland. They know Chicago is one of the hottest smoking uh, areas there is in the country, and they will be doing a seminar to update everybody on what's going on in Washington, D.C., and the fight that they're doing daily to fight this government against tobacco. So that is open to everyone to check out. And they are serious, all right? They you are see how serious he was there? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off yeah. that we, be. we are adults. Yeah. We can make that decision of what's good or bad for ourselves. And if we choose to smoke, <laughs> then we choose to smoke. Washington, D.C. don't have to worry about what I do. We don't need this government <laughs> right. overreach, man. P you're pissing me off, Timmy. You're <laughs> pissing me off. <laughs> I'm sorry. I need a light. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the good news is, is that the PCA is here to tell us about grassroots organization. How do, you know, you know. Now, uh, hopefully, they will get behind a, pipe tobacco a, too. Well, as a teacher, I'll tell you the, you know, people don't understand. You know, people think their votes don't count. Well, you know, when you work your local vote, you know, you work your state representatives, you work your state congressmen. You know, before you get to the federal, these are the people that are easy to remove from office. Yes. You know, they all need to They're, be removed anyway, oh, but go for it. I'm sorry. Come about that, you're you're, you're going to blow an O ring. You're, you're, you're going to blow an O ring, okay? All right? Calm down. All right? I Have a smoke. I can't. I can't. Can you get him a shot? I've never heard of Get him a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Salute to America. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Can't drink a lot. Maybe not having a shot. But the point <laughs> is, is that, you know, the PCA can teach you basically how you work with your local clubs, your local shops, and you work with your local representatives. Yes. Like, you know, um, I'm, and I'm not saying this to be mean. I'm just saying it, in Illinois, it's easier to go get weed yeah. than it is to get tobacco. That's almost any, any state now. You know, and, and that's fine. I, there's no there's no judgment here. I'm just saying it's like, you know, uh, let's have no, a little, you know, kind of equity crazy. here. Yeah, you know, to treat the two the same. We're well, I'll never computer. forget the time we were in Vegas going to the PCA. Yeah. And we come out of the hotel, and Frank, Ronnie, and I we just stepped outside, and we go to light up our cigars. We're outside the hotel, and the valet comes running over. He says, what are you guys doing? Nothing. We're going to smoke our cigars. Well, you can't light up a cigar outside in the street. 
We're outside. Can't do it in Vegas. But you can walk around smoking dupes. Yeah, don't that's cigar- okay. Don't cigarettes that's cigars. That's okay. But we can't smoke a cigar out in the open air. <laughs> that was one of the scariest things for us, too, it, doing the mobile lounge was, you know, the, such the negativity on cigar smoking and things like that. You know, would it survive? Would it, you know, would we thrive off of it? Just because, you know, cigar smoking and pipe smoking and, you know, such scene is... That's it's taboo now. Taboo. Yeah, taboo. Yeah. It says who though? Right. That, that that group over there. Right. You know. And come but, to find out, there's so many closeted cigar smokers out there that you know they just all flock to us, which is great. I'm I'm loving it. You know. Yeah. And that's the point of our our show too, though, is that to bring back the essence of what our community is about. So bringing cigars and and pipes together is important because look. What happens to one is going to happen to the other. Right. The power in numbers. Yeah. Okay. And well, we, we all have, have to protect too. ourselves with well, this. You we know? have numbers to join forces, man. Yeah. We got to. We have to. We have to. And the way you do that is by working with the PCA yeah. and working your local representatives and saying, why are you doing this 40 extra 80% tax on tobacco? I mean, you know, I'm a nobody. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a taxpayer. Just allow me a little bit of time and my own little That's space. why we need to stick together. Yeah. Go leave fight. me the fuck we alone. We all have to fight <laughs> together, folks. This is yeah. not just you and me or the, or the six of us in this trailer. You out there, you're listening. You have to get involved. Don't leave it to the next guy. No. All right? Bob, Frank, Kyle, myself, we do this every week. We, we push this every week for you to go out there and understand that as a community, we have to stick together and fight Washington, D.C. and the deep state. All right? You have to. The swamp is killing us. We need to get rid of the swamp, period. All right? But not only that, you know, it doesn't end there. Even for people who who may be listening who are not smokers, remember this. It, it doesn't, it's not just about the us who smoke. Oh, you got to get It's about out everybody. Who, who you want to get in there? What it's they're trying to do is take it. your I rights know. away. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, mean, I know it's not like to talk to anybody, but we're, we're back to this, you know, all right. a great uh, we, we have a guest, a major they guest, we, 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 the one, the only, Mr. Steve Norris! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> How you doing, this is personal, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> I'm gonna give up my headphones nice and my spot. This is, this you, is you, you sit here, brother. Uh, All right, absolutely. you don't hear from me no more because I just killed the deep state. Steve the Norris is coming just, after me. Steve Norris just made the show 50 percent better by getting rid of Ryan before he even opened his own mouth. <laughs> 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 out of here. Right. Drink. Oh wow! Steve Norris, man. Nice to be yeah. home. Nice to be home. <laughs> so anybody who's in anybody who's anybody in the pipe world, when it comes to great briars and the material to make pipes, this is the guy. All right. Yep. So you know, Steve's a man of few words, but I'll, I'll allow him a few words. <laughs> so Steve, mm. just tell us just a little bit about the backbone that you are. So we. We are a steward of the industry in regards to getting the right supplies under the right roof for a one-stop shop. We're a voice for pipe makers. We advocate what needs to be done, what needs to be handled. All the import export take care of 180 something countries and make sure everyone has what they need. So we brought our, our basically our whole store with us, a little bit of everything. And we'll have an absolute but, full store set up with all the supplies. That's awesome. Wow. You know, most pipe makers order briar and they're limited to it what they get. Of course. And they don't never have the opportunity to pick through and look at each block that is drastically different than the next block. No two are alike. Yeah. Yeah. So here we are to offer I'm a personal the, friend of Mimo though, so I get what I want. No, I'm not yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, I <laughs> <laughs> I, I love going over there. It's a you? You know, yeah. Yeah, that, that's a fun place to yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, you know, this year Steve's going to have it basically your own shop set up, wow. which is awesome because remember back at Pheasant Run, that's what yeah. you had going on. And, yeah, you know, yeah. and when we moved, you know, we didn't have that, you know, and it's hard to, I'm going to say, um, I've done pipe repairs before, and Bobby knows I was getting into it, and it was hard to get good Vulcan. 
Uh-huh. You know, and a lot of the Vulcan I would get would split. You know, but, um, oh, it's because it was aged, and it doesn't hold well over time. I mean, it becomes fragile. You yeah. know, but but you need somebody who knows what they're providing. Exactly. You know, yeah. and the provider I was getting from, you know, that, that individual just didn't know the material. <laughs> you know, um, I ordered from Steve, and you know, his his acrylics. You know. And, you know, I got greasy hands so many times they go flying and they wouldn't break. <laughs> you know, that, that's a beautiful thing. That's a you wonderful know? thing. Yep. You know, 20 years ago, we would have to be on chat forums. And yeah. we would have to get 30 or 40 of us together to all chip in money and have one person yeah. head off ordering ebonite rods in one color, one diameter. This was a multi-month process just to be able to get something sent over from germany and mm. so at an early age in the industry when i started a while back i saw we need the one-stop shop that can bring in what we need so now we have hundreds of variations of something that we could barely get one of 20 years ago wow so that's that's the crucial one of the crucial aspects just like what is pipe smoking without tobacco it's the same as it would be without Briar and all the supplies. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just so, a real honor. So if to somebody be a comes steward. down to the show, they'll be able to come to your booth and, and yeah. pretty much purchase whatever it is room. they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. He's got his own room. So we have a, room. a whole conference room right next door to the pipe making seminar. Wow. And we're going to have that open at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning till 6 p.m. Sunday night. And going to be nice. nice to be wow <laughs> so anybody out there who's thinking about trying their hand or has tried their hand um and and if, if you talk to a lot of carvers not being able to handle the briar you're just ordering it yep. and then you handle it when you get to see it and i've talked to, with steve about this i also talked to carvers about it you cut into a you know 50 to 90 dollar piece of briar and it's shot you're out you know you might as well turn that into a good like like pipe holder. Yep. Nature you know? of the beast. Digging yeah. up a burl out of the ground and hoping for the best. You so, know? Well, at least you get to be... hold that piece in your hand. So you can say, okay, this is the one I want to try. You yeah. Know? Yep. Well, having yep. somebody who knows the briar is what's the important sure. piece, you know, because that's again when we're trying to bring back pipe culture, you need somebody who knows briar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you need somebody who knows vulcanite, knows their acrylics, you know, knows knows buffing compound. Bobby and I used to talk a lot about buffing compound. Oh, oh yeah, that's an important part you of know? it, man. Really. So <laughs> having Steve in the house is a it's a game changer. Oh, we don't you smoke know? dukes here now. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Canada. Pass it around, man. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll bring out some of the old vintage smokes in a little while yes. too. Oh, yeah, we, had had many, right? we had some ninety-year-old <laughs> Chesterfield. Okay. Hold on, hold on. I, those of you who, who didn't hear, ninety-year-old Chesterfield. Yeah, wow. Perfectly preserved. Two nights ago. Is, because they're still moist, the way a cutter top. Tin welded together is sealed. Wow. The natural sugars, which was a high sugar content was that old Virginia? years ago. Yep. Old Virginia to Pure them, Virginia yeah. And when it ferments, it builds pressure in the tin. Yeah. So as absolutely. long as there's pressure, it is going to be as fresh as fresh can be. This wow. is where uh, fermenting becomes dangerous. Is. Yeah. Okay, because yep. those things are incredibly good. <laughs> I'd like to try one. Yep. Oh, yeah. Wow. You, you know, the pipe making supply is a pretty deep passion lifestyle yeah. choice, but the vintage tobacco is just a notch above that. Yeah. Well, do you remember? <laughs> uh, well, Frank, Frank rem- probably remembers. Uh, uh, I think it was four years ago, we were upstairs in the. Uh, that pheasant run, whatever that that, that the private tower. the private room was, and there was somebody who had opened up a tin of tobacco pipe tobacco. Nineteen fifty two. Nineteen fifty two. I think it was my birthday, yep. the year I was born, and uh, passed it around. And he just opened up the tin, and it was the most unbelievable smell I had ever had. Yeah, and it was just pure Virginia. I mean, it, it was all crystallized. I mean. Jack of Diamonds was it was called, yeah. What wow. a smoke it was! Wow. Oh my God! The best. 
it, I think it was the it best. It might have been one smoked. of the best smokes I ever had. Right. Yeah. I mean, again. Yeah. Uh, Seventy-year-old tobacco. Seventy-one-year-old tobacco. Well, now it would be, but back then, yeah. It would well, back then, yeah. Well, don't push your age. No, no, no. Sixty-eight <laughs> years was good enough. <laughs> old enough. Saying, old old enough. Sixty-nine, but who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I agree with you. I mean, if you can get your hands on anything of that age, that's still fresh. You know, yeah. nothing will beat it. Yeah, totally. You can't. You can't. Not at all. Not at all. There's going to be. We do have somebody in the house that we got to get on. We got to get on. (laughs) Well, I mean, I'll give up my mic. You you can have my mic. Oh, oh. I got to go unload bands and shuffle product. I got to get to work. Someone's got to work. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thanks, Thanks for coming, man. man. Appreciate Thank it. You. And we'll see you real soon. Let me know about your room. You got anything going on? You know, I don't have a light. I think Tim has one. We're switching over, yeah. folks. Hi, Come on, man. Do we have another guest oh, in the house? I'm telling you, man. It's his own name. This is off the hook. It's off the hook. Uh, there you we go. Have Steve I Norris. Think. Now we got Jeff Grasick in the house. This is a this is hello, a plus, hello. folks. This is a total plus. We did not. Nice to meet you, Bob. <laughs> Good to meet you. Good to meet you. <laughs> Timmy, how are you? No, no. Good to see you. Brian Jordan. <laughs> all right. So, first of all, if you uh, know our pipe carving seminar, if you heard about our pipe carving seminar, or if you watch Battle of the Briar, you're seeing one of the, the minds behind Battle of the Briar right here. Such as it is. Such it as it is. But, you know, <laughs> let's face it, you know, it's. It's an innovation in in pipe culture. Again, we're talking about reviving pipe culture in this country. Battle of the Briar. Yeah. Jeff, take us there. What's going on? First of all, Jeff Grasick, if you don't know Jeff Grasick, you have to come to the show and get to meet him. He's like, you know, he's kind of a rock superstar, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like 10 people know who I am. They're in this trailer and then my family at home. So. <laughs> I'll take what I can get. He's good company. Well, you're in 75 countries around the world hey. right now. Hello, hello. <laughs> so, Jeff, talk us, up, talk us through about the, the evolution of the pipe carving yeah, seminar. Yeah, yeah. So it started out just, you know, teaching people how to make pipes. Yeah. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. we had Levi and Eric, you know. Yeah. You yeah, had, yeah. you know, you know, you had Alex Florov. Mm-hmm. We've had some of the great carvers. Absolutely, yeah. And you know, how long have you been involved? And talk <laughs> to us about the idea of evolving and growing. Right. Yeah. So, gosh, I've been doing that for 12, 13, 14 years. I don't even know. I don't know when I first went. And it really came from I would see people hanging out outside this this door at the Mega Center, the Pheasant Run, where we used to be, and. Uh, you know, friends would ask me to stop by and eventually, you know, after a year or so, they asked me if I would stick around for a while and help people out. And I did that. And then they asked me if I could come in a day earlier and help out a little bit more. And so I ended up just spending more and more time there. Got to know Lee pretty well through that, Mike Butera, um, uh, Alex Florov, I already knew, um, uh, Brian Ruthenberg, who ran it for a lot of years. Um, pipes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, was right before the pandemic. It was uh, 2018, I think. Maybe it was the show of 2019. Yep, it was 2020 was the pandemic year. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's all all blurry now. It's all blurry. Yeah. So I think it was 2019. Um, Lee approached me and said that he he had been running it right, and he said, "Hey, uh, will you take it over for me?" And I was like, "Oh my gosh, it's an honor!" And then he was just like, "Yes, I don't have to do it anymore. I just handed off the responsibility." <laughs> like, what did I get myself into? Yeah. But I really, you know, I, uh, having been involved in it for so many years and also having taught pipe makers in my workshop, I've run seminars in California um, where professionals and uh, aspiring pipe makers have come out to work with me. I had a, a different, I had some different ideas for how the show might, uh, or how the, uh, uh, the seminar might change. And I pitched them to Alan, uh, who runs, uh, he, he's the, the, the show committee uh, person responsible for it. And he said, sure, let's do it. And my idea was basically, let's change it. Let's change the structure uh, to one that is uh, where everybody's working on the same shape. And it helps us, the instructors, to help the, the pipe makers refine their skills. Mm. So instead of everybody choosing their own shape, and we're trying to hurt right. cats. Too many. Yeah. Keep now, it simple. 
keep it simple, keep it simple. It's a simple process. We took a lot of the tools out. We made it, we're like, what can we do to help you get out of here with the best looking pipe that, uh, that we can help you make? So and so what it's been the shape that's been chosen for this show for this year. So, uh, 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 this year for our one-on-one class, we actually have two levels of the yep. classes, which I added. Uh, last year was our first year doing the second level. The first year, uh, our first uh, first level of class, 101, is doing a bent doublet. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very and cool. so that class, like, it's um, it's fascinating because what, what we hand them is a phrased pipe. Uh, if anybody's familiar with pipe making in factories around the world, that's what they do. Like they phrase a pipe. They have a machine that turns that makes a shape for you, mm-hmm. and that's what we're handing people. That with a uh, a stem a mouthpiece blank put into it, and it looks like a finished pipe almost. Like, oh, yeah, it just needs a little bit of sanding. That's what everybody thinks, and we prove to them it takes them about two days to get it to look like a real pipe. Sure. That it's a lot. Of work. So a lot of work into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it just yeah. gives them an appreciation for. In a factory setting, like how much skill and time goes into making a pipe that you might spend a hundred dollars on, so that like was part of what we were trying to to help them with. And then the tool one class, which we started last year, we give them another step up, where we we give them uh, we have them do all the shaping of the pipe. So they're all, it's still a predetermined shape that I cut out and I fit. So it's just a like a two dimensional shape, and then we help them finish it. And so that's a much smaller. You have to have taken the one on one to yeah, go to that yeah, class. Sure, yeah, of course. Yeah, you got to get better as you go. Along. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And then you evolved it mm-hmm. again by doing the concept of Battle of the Briar. That's right. That's right. And anybody who you know, if you have a chance, it's still up on YouTube. You can always check that out. But you know, talk about like an innovation. Yeah. Again, we're trying to grow culture. Mm-hmm. What better way to show to people, like, you know, the the process yeah. that great pipe carvers mm-hmm. go through when they're making those decisions? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you, and know, you get to see it happen in real time. You yeah. get to see, like, what is someone encounters a problem. That, there's not a pipe maker in the world who doesn't run through one or two pipes before encountering some major problem. And, it, and you're going to get to see that in real time. What do they do with it? Because you've got an hour. Like our, the, the concept for this thing is you've got a pipe kit, you've got one hour to make the best pipe you can. And you're talking about pipe makers who are typically, you know, devoting one to three days to making a pipe. Yeah, because yes. of the hours that I have in some of the ones I've made, yeah. I know that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine, yeah. It's another local car. But again, mm-hmm. a lot of people don't Six realize. Six miles of Johnny Walker. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people well, don't realize the what they yeah. want to. <laughs> As the quality goes down, right? <laughs> And that's another thing. Some people wonder, oh, why would a pipe cost that much? Yeah. But when you see what goes behind cre- right. the creation, yeah, you'll know why a pipe costs that much money. Right. Plain and simple. Yeah. You know? I mean, part of when I when I first approached Tim with this idea, it was three years ago now yeah. in Chicago, and uh, I mean, first of all, like kudos to Tim. My God, this would not have happened if it weren't for him. Like he was calling me and texting me and said, "What about this? What about that? What's your idea?" and I mean, if he had not done that, if you hadn't been so, like, just on it with it, this wouldn't have happened. And I'm so grateful for your uh, your driving force behind us, making it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim, yeah, yeah. Tim can be a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he is a delicate flower. Right. right. I am. I am. So, I'm a narcissist. Uh, <laughs> poisonous, motherfucker. So what I'd really like to say is, like, you know, but it, it, it's, it's not that, like, you know, it's the ideas. Yeah. Um, you know, Jeff knows pipes. I don't, I, I mean, I could repair a pipe, I could clean a pipe, but I don't make a pipe, no, mm-hmm. you know. And how do you expand the culture like that? So, when people come up with great ideas and they're willing to do the footwork, you know, Ron and I want to make these things come to happen, yeah. You know, people yeah. want to see it, people mm-hmm. want to see the, the carving process, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, and, and the idea is like this is an educational thing, right? So people can see what goes into making one. If this is, and, and just imagine, right? If these pipe makers can make this, what they turn out, and, and you could see online what they made last year in yeah. one hour. Imagine what they could do in a day or two or three days. Like, yeah, exactly. yeah, Tommy, so, Scott, and Jared, they really... They killed it. They killed it, man. Yeah. They did. You yeah. Know? 
I mean, that, and that just gives you, uh, hopefully gives the audience and pipe lovers around the world an idea of just how much talent these pipe makers have yeah. and how much care and attention they're putting into their work. It's not like they're sitting around twiddling their phones for the other, you know, eight to 12 hours. Yeah. They're, they're doing, like, they're working the whole yeah, time. To, to have someone's concept that's, that's mm -hmm. just in their mind and actually create it and put yeah. it in your hand. Right. That's that's art. That's I think it's, art. And it's you special, know? right? Like absolutely. It's that, and I don't care if you're a novice or a uh, you know a, 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 someone who smoked the pipe for the last fifty years. Yeah. S mm -hmm. Seeing it created is it, yeah. just a, a a big big to do. It really is. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 exciting. It's exciting to see. Uh, to go, to go yeah, from one music to my ears here too. Yeah. That you Here's a piece of wood. Oh, now mm -hmm. turn it into something. I'm gonna go. Ah, yeah. oh, you know. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. <laughs> people know if you watch the show, Frank and Bob are gonna be in the room videotaping and watching this live. Yep. So if you're not here at the show, check it out on the Great Cigar and Pipe Show. You're gonna actually see Jeff and his crew put together and make these spectacular pipes in person. Yeah. 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 So I mean, you know. I, I appreciate the you know the props, but the props go to the mind that creates the idea. You know, exactly. we just make things happen. You know, but you know what makes that. this show happen? Sponsors make this yeah. show happen. Yes, they mm -hmm. do. Yes, they do. So, and maybe and we should stop and go to one. Cousin Frank <laughs> is going to give us our sponsors in a minute. Yeah, right, Frank. Yeah, yeah. Another day in paradise. You know, snaggy cigars. <laughs> Howard G. Cigars is a dynamic new cigar brand grown from a love for cigar culture and a respect for the artisanship behind the craft. We are a minority-owned family business based in Orlando, Florida. Our current collection delivers three exclusive lines, the Black Moses, Magic Stick, All Pro Series featuring Leon Searcy's signature cigar and Ike Taylor's One of a Kind, and the newly released perfect round featuring 18 cigars a front nine and a back nine visit our website at www.howardgcigars.com you can find the full list of our retail partners there too thank you for making us part of your humidor DAV cigars out of New York decades of experience combined with true love and deep understanding of cigars result in the highest of standard of each DAV hand-rolled cigar. This is Phil Morgan, General Manager of Missouri Meerschaum Corn Cob Pipes in Washington, Missouri. Our mission since 1869 has been to produce great smoking pipes that anyone can afford. We guarantee our pipes won't be your most expensive, but they just might be the ones you smoke the most. At Missouri Meerschaum Company, we don't just sell our corn cob pipes. We grow them, make them, and smoke them. Missouri Meerschaum, Washington, Missouri, since 1869. Loyalty, passion, Courage. These are the founding principles of K by Karen Berger Cigars. The Maduro, the Habano, and the newly rated 93 by Cigar Journal Connecticut. Do yourself a favor and check out this wonderful line of cigars that come from a completely linear company from seed to your hands. At Mountain Smoke Premium Tobacco, we specialize solely in the finest hand-rolled, craft, and boutique cigars on the market. Mountain Smoke Premium Tobacco is sure to have something that will excite you. Shop our online humidor at www.mountainsmokewv.com. A family of four generations in tobacco. It started in Odense, Denmark, 141 years ago, 1882, with a factory and a retail store by Eric Peter Stokeby. Fourth Generation is a premium quality brand consisting of a selection of tin and loose tobaccos made in Denmark. Pipes, made of the finest quality briar and superior accessories from leather goods, lighters, and pipe tools. The selection of fourth generation products are available in premium pipe and cigar stores in the US and many European countries. Check out fourthgenpipetobacco.com. And we're back, folks. And, of course, for those who have just tuned in, uh, well, 
I don't know. I don't want to retra- rehash the whole show again, but uh, we have a new face here. And every, I think everybody knows your face, Jamie. I, I, fortunately, probably. Yes. <laughs> Jamie from Stem and Briar just came into the, into the uh, lounge. And um, another fantastic restorer. Restorer, estate sales. Yep, estate sales. I mean, a, a guy who's been in the pipe industry for uh, I don't know, more years than we yeah. get to say, right? Fifth, oh, God. Probably, yeah, pushing close to 15. 15 years. <laughs> All right. He's yeah. a young man. He's a young guy. He's a young guy. Just got his I remember wet. my 15th anniversary. <laughs> in the yeah. Yeah. We'll say something to the people. Maybe uh, introduce just, yourself. No. Yeah. Well, just, yeah. Brian Sem and Breyer, and uh, excited to be at Chicago. Assistant Jeff with the um, carbon class, and doing, when is it, Thursday? Doing an estate restoration and cleaning class. Um, just excited to be here. Oh, I just should go. Here only. Jamie, you are yeah. taking over the class from Alan. I am. So this is your. Is this a transitional uh, year? Transition. It's transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. More, more than last year. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're stepping up to the plate. It, it, it was an easy transition since all the crap was in my backyard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Mine from my dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if anybody needs repairs, yep. this is the man. You send it over to him. And uh, you will have that pipe one hundred percent when you get it back. That is the plan. Absolutely, man. Mm-hmm. And I know you've done fantastic work. I've watched you work. I've been in your home many times. <laughs> the shop, and you've repaired some stuff for the, me. So the, the shop is not grown. It's just more crap got added to it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> have you started uh, making your own? Uh, not stuff? no, not yet. So um, I'm still waiting for that pipe. Huh? Soon, yes. Yeah, yeah, soon. Okay. Okay. <laughs> soon. <laughs> The tooling yeah. is coming along nicely. The tooling is coming. Hey, that's a beginning. You can need I, the tools. Can I sing Jamie's praise here for, for a yeah. moment? Yeah. So Jamie took the class, what, three years ago? Uh, three years and, and uh, last, no, two years and then last year. Two years, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, so Alan wanted you to come on and help out, and we were talking a little bit about it, and I was like, okay, I mean, I'm used to work with Alan. Jamie's great. I don't know what Jamie, you know, what I, I don't know about your background or anything. And we got on a call, and uh, um, we uh, were talking about a particular tool, and it was like the next day or something. Jamie's like, hey, I made like 15 of them. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't even I can't even answer emails, and this guy's like going to making fifteen. I was like, okay, well I did make. We'll take him. We'll take him. (laughs) He'll do. Yeah, I only I only got twelve made this morning before I got here. That's a shame. That's a shame. I had a pack. I know. I know. know. (laughs) Uh, Well, the business is going well with you. It's good. It's good. Um, I mean, it is a side hobby, but uh, it's keeping me out of trouble. I'm off the streets. So if I send you some, what's the waiting list now? Uh, running about four to six weeks. Four to six weeks. Yep. So if I send in six weeks' time, you'll get it done right away? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> How many people are in the class this year in uh, 101 and 201? Oh, what do we got? We got nine, 19, I think 19 or 20. 20, We're because six. Hassan is now taking that for that spot. Oh, you're right. So uh, six, is it? 13 and six. 7. Is it? No, six. Or 14 and 6. 14, 14 and, six. and 6. Yeah, we're limited at 20, 20. people. Yep. Yeah. 20. Right. 20. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I don't know how it was in the past, and I'm really happy that we're doing it this way now. We've got we've got four great instruct, well, three great instructors, and then I'll be there too. Um, uh, so we've got Alex Florov. Uh, you know, everybody who's listening to this knows ought to know who Alex Florov is, uh, and Jared Coles, also another phenomenal pipe maker, and David Huber is this is his first year joining us as well. Oh, wow. Also, just an extraordinarily talented pipe maker. So we're just really uh, just delighted to have all three of those guys helping out. Um, the 101 class will be primarily run by those three and they're going to be like, I have what I intro- one of the things that I introduced to the class was a, a method that is very systematic for people making pipes, it helps people organize the processes. And Jamie knows well from his tool background, it's kind of important. Yep. Yeah. You want, you want to make sure you do step, you know, step one step. before you do step three. Uh, well, usually it works that way. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Or else you have problems. Otherwise you fall on your face. <laughs> yeah. And so we, we uh, put some, some steps in place that help people so they can get through the pipe making and then hopefully repeat it when they go home. Uh, and, uh, and then I'll be doing the tool one class and uh, we'll see, you know, where it goes in the future. We have a waiting list this year, which is, yeah. You know, last year I think we had maybe one or two people. I think, yeah, it wasn't many spots, but it's, yeah. it's been pretty full. Yeah, and so I'm like, as you know, seeing, I'm excited to see it grow. 
like that there's more enthusiasm for it. That we're yeah, like a waiting list is great. We'll see what we can do to get more people in next year. Awesome. And uh, you know, or or at least, you know, uh, let people sign up earlier so they can get yeah, a spot. Yeah, yeah. Sign <laughs> yeah. up now for next year. Right. right, right. <laughs> they, they go really fast. Yeah. As soon yeah. as we hit it, yep. it's sold out. So you gotta be right on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And where and, else? What other show can you go that has this to offer? I don't yeah. think there's any. I don't think so, right? No. I mean, the anyone the know? seminars, the classes, no. everything that's offered no, here. No, this is, is it. Education. Yeah. That's yep. what we do. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, and it's like, uh, you, y'all have watched pipe making videos on YouTube, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, right? of course. Of There's course. something something totally different. Yeah. Like that, I mean, YouTube is a, it has been like a revelation for people of all hobbies. You know, yeah. oh, my goodness, it's I can see someone doing what they're doing. a lot to learn. Yeah. yeah. But seeing but it done hands in person, on, hands you on, can't, having, you can't have having a anything full-time but hands professional on. stand next to you and be like, do this, not that. Yeah. And do what I did. And it's just, yeah, it's an experience you're not going to find anywhere else. It's certainly not the pipe community. No, and for someone who's trying to learn on their own, I mean, yeah, you make plenty of mistakes. But yeah. if somebody's there to guide you with anything, mm-hmm. I mean, think of how many extra steps you would eliminate. Right. And getting to that next level mm-hmm. that much quicker, yeah. you know, and having guys yeah, like it's, you, it's the undocumented. You know, it's hands on. It's it's, it's, yeah. it's a wealth of information. Mm-hmm. A wealth. Plus well, the undocumented stuff too. It's like, well, you just yeah, put it on the wheel and do this. Okay, it sounds good on paper. Yeah, it looks good on a video. Then you go yeah. do it, and you're like, why that didn't work at all? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right, right. And I've watched you do things, Jamie, uh, in your house. Uh, I'm like in, in shock. I'm saying, wow, look at this guy. I mean. Uh, I would have never have thought of doing something mm-hmm. like that, you know. And he's just like, oh, okay, here, here, next, you know. He knocks it off in like a couple of minutes, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Experience. Yeah, and that's what it is. Or, mm-hmm. or to learn yeah. from these guys. How many did Come you on. mess up before you got that one right? Um, yeah. you, I, I think it was three. You told me right. I say, well, actually, surprisingly, it wasn't a lot. It just took me a, a lot longer. Mm-hmm. Although late nights and beer definitely bring great ideas. Yeah, <laughs> or, I, or ideas, yeah. Yeah. or at least take the safety aspect out yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> we can speed this up. Just the knack that you two right. guys have. You, have. you just have that natural ability. You know, it, it, it's yeah. just something that God gave you. It's a gift that you guys just simply have. Well, and let, let's not uh, discount the years and years yeah. of practice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's like but anybody it's actually, made yeah, a lot, right. a lot of mistakes, a yeah. lot of mistakes. That, but the, the key is, and we try to hammer this in in the classes, learning anything is like everybody makes mistakes. I encourage my kids to make mistakes all the time. Well, that's then, how you learn. But you got to yeah. learn. Yeah, yeah. If you're making the same mistake over and over again, well, one like, has okay. to have a talent. You know, it's like a great painter. Yeah, I'm sure they started out with, with yeah. stick figures, yeah. but you progress. You learn mm-hmm. as you go along, right? And then, and you guys are, are the same thing. You are artists oh, within this within this kind of artwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's not a, it's not a finished it's not a finished thing. So no, always you'll to, always learn, and, yeah. and you hope to well, do that. So. You know, of course, <laughs> please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was uh, one of the other things about the class that I want to mention is uh, that's a real benefit to the students, and they they love it. Is that um, you know, of course, Chicago attracts pipe makers from all around the world of you know from everyone from like peterson uh peterson pipes out of dublin all the way to nana everson and um k goto from japan mm. and uh, uh um uh i'm blanking on names right now uh, uh, ping, ping john from from china uh and what i invite them to do you know we i've been around the community for a while i've been friends with a lot of these people I invite them to come by the class and they're going to spend you know uh, that Ping is going to come in, I think, tomorrow, and he's going to take about 15, 20 minutes to do a, wow. a Q&A with the class. And really? He's going to demonstrate wow. a skill for people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah. And Don't so we have, up, we, we have some yeah. rice pipe makers who stop in, <laughs> and they'll do they'll spend time visiting. And, and uh, you know, it's not really an experience you're going to get anywhere else. No, it's worth its weight in gold right mm-hmm. there. I mean, to, to be able to rub elbows with people like you, uh, I don't know, like I said earlier, where else can you get this yeah. experience? You and know, really, the, the yeah. price is you know for for what it. I I, I don't know so, how much it costs. I think it's under two hundred dollars. It is. Right? Yeah, it was like one eighty five for some two, yeah. for two days of instruction. Right, and you get to keep your pipe. And, and you get your pipe at the end of this, yeah, you know. All the materials. Yeah, you 185, that's like, all it takes. Now, now we're feeling like QVC. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Can you make it three easy payments? <laughs> three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, Pipe makers, uh, many many pipe makers invite people into their workshops to work with them, 
and like to go to a pipe maker's workshop to learn, it's going to cost you a lot more, yeah. a lot more than that, ten times that. Um, Jamie never charged mm -hmm. me. <laughs> How many times have we well, gone to your house and just stood there and watched? The pipe show is just so much, there's so much education here. I mean, yeah. you know, from, and that's kind of what, you know, not to get, jump in the cigar thing, but that's kind of what got me into it too, because, you know, we're talking, you know, guys would come into the, the you know, talk to you guys come in the lounge and they're like, uh, look at the, they look at the humidor and they're like, well, I don't know what to smoke, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I got a cigar at a wedding once and, that's that's about all I you know yeah. that's about all I've done you know so you know you educate them you try to try to steer them in the right direction mm -hmm. same with pipes you know you try to absolutely educate them tobacco the, the, the way to make a pipe the, you know mm -hmm. it's just it's phenomenal and it's all about education yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's like a place to come to find a mentor right yeah absolutely yeah. Or, or a whole building full of them yeah. <laughs> that's true too and some of them some of them know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so, guys, so you guys are all ready for tomorrow. Basically, game plan. Could there be any more than twenty at any given shot? What's it's tomorrow we need to make it twenty? Wait, tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow. tomorrow morning. Oh, <laughs> yeah. To be exact. Yes. Yeah, we're all set. Well, well we're good. Hours, get some mm -hmm. sleep. <laughs> the first class is at 5 a.m. You know is that, it, right? Yeah. It, I'm teaching the second class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go to our sponsors. How about that? And then we'll get Let's to our that. segment called Smoke the Chooch, which is now called Soccer Squash. Soccer, Soccer Squash. squash. <laughs> Hang in there, folks. At Norwood Royal Cigars, we have the biggest walk-in humidor in the Midwest. Our 1,500-square-foot humidor is home to almost 4,000 different cigars that will meet the need of any cigar enthusiast. We have boutique blends to the more traditional selections and everything in between. From the novice beginner to the aficionado, the knowledgeable staff at NRC will find the perfect cigar for you. Located on the northwest side of Chicago, we want to be your shop for all your cigar wants and needs. As always, at Norwood Royal Cigars, light it, smoke it, love it. Experience the magic of Rockefeller Cigars today. With 11 years steeped in tradition, passion, and mystery of the leaf, Rockefeller has a cigar just for you. Be like the greatest magicians and make Rockefeller Cigars appear in your lineup with any of our four lines. The Nicaraguan. The Dominican Blue. The Vintage Gold. And our new Ellie, The Art of Magic. Cigar in the Bottle is two palate-pleasing gifts in one. A specially blended Grand Pommier XS VSOP Cognac is elegantly contained in patented numbered bottles. Winner of back-to-back-to-back-to-back medals at the LA Spirits Awards, Cigar in the Bottle inventor for Bidden Johnny teams up with Vartan and Hendrik Hellner for this custom-blended Vartan Reserva Cigar, well-preserved in a hand-blown glass chamber featuring Bovita two-way humidification. It all begins at the very first climate-controlled Rodriguez Olivan Cigar Factory, located in the Dominican Republic. Our two major brands include Don Olivan, which are boutique cigars suited for that individual who takes great pride in something unique. 
BAMF is our Armed Forces Cigars, designed for that badass mother effort. Not only are you smoking a great premium cigar, a percentage of the proceeds is donated to our heroic men and women in uniform. Uh, and we're back. And we're back, folks. Uh, you know, and I'm we'll sitting next that. to Tim. And the one, the only, cousin Frank. Frank. And there he is. <laughs> he finally made the big time with us. I, I made the big shot. The Welcome big shot. back here, Frank. And we got Tim. And folks, I hope you have really been enjoying uh, our special guest this evening. Um, this is like one in a one in a lifetime to get him here. Maybe next year we'll do this again. Yeah, I mean, with all these you don't get guests. this in, in, in one program. You just don't get to get these this caliber of people. You know? No, no, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. But it happens here. It once, does. once a year, you will get it here. I, I'm still trying to figure out why things are sounding the way they sound. Everything sounds like it's an open mic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds well, like it's I, one. I, I think it's because it's hard know. edge. It should be. There's nothing to absorb sound where we are. Mm -hmm. No, you don't think so. Don't think what so. do you think? I think it's a whole mind fuck. I think I think, think the whole so? thing. It's. it's <laughs> <laughs> you it's know what I matrix. think? Hey, We're in the Matrix. Folks. As long as I can. Hey, how does it sound for you? If it doesn't sound great, it's not my fault. No. It's no. Ronnie's fault. If, I'll if take the hit. What up, the hell? I always take the hit. I'm the, head. Head. So I'm the guy. All, all but it's always Ronnie's fault. So it is. everyone knows that. When in doubt, blame Ronnie. <laughs> yeah. Like tonight, yeah. you know, we always have, you know, some kind of questions for the audience. People love to win. He said it sounds good. Okay. Well, so Thank you, Clay. Say it sounds good. It's, all well, it's probably right. just we us. sound a little tinny in here, a little bit different than what we normally do. We have a do. tin ceiling. But we, oh, we, we have a tin ceiling. A tin ceiling makes you sound. It tinny. sounds like Tin Pan Alley, right? <laughs> it's tin. We have a tin ceiling. Tin, tin ceiling. Tin there ceiling. you go. God. All we know is we can't thank all you live audience out yeah. there. You guys have been fabulous. We're so excited that you're following us tonight. Yes. Because we are. Super excited to bring you this week. Well, we're bringing Chicago you the Super Pike Bowl of tobacco. Yes, well, this I is it. Show. This I is it. Too. Yeah. This is it. Once a year, and the Great Cigar and Pipe Show is bringing it to you live all week, man. Okay, all week. Uh, or dead. Live or dead, we still bring it to you. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Well, I don't know Why do I love it? Tim's blowing, Tim, Tim's blowing circles. Well, no, Tim, Tim is, Tim is blowing, smoke. blowing out smoke. That, 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 first of all, uh, well, any pipe smoker who knows about pipe that's been, a uh, pipe tobacco that's been uh, cellared mm -hmm. for X amount of time knows what it's like when you break that out and tim has broken out stuff i'm not even going to tell people what you got there um well look, look. this is unbelievable if you want tobacco. some stone haven or penzance no, you no, can't it, get any tim doesn't some have of the show tim doesn't have it i will pack a bowl for you all right it's not a big deal you know why it's about sharing it's a fellowship wow. of the leaf so cousin frank take us into the next round there you go okay. tim. Chris, Chris Coker says, you know, the prizes are only 0.0000005% of what makes the show great. Oh, uh, there you go. Makes up the rest. Thank oh, you. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I think Chris Cutler is Bob. He must have too much to drink. Chris, uh, or Chris changed his name. Or Bob changed his name and he's using telepathy to, to make comments through Chris. Chris, I, I gather you got that envelope, huh? <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy. So, but uh, my man Clay, I like to call him Clay Akins from uh, Virginia, but Clay Atkins is on. He's always saying hi to us. Always. So, a great Clay, listener. A great listener. I, I mean, I don't know how he puts up with, with it, but Clay, thank you very much. Clay has a good sense of humor. Who does? Clay. Well, he, he says does. he loves you, Bob. At least Clay does. <laughs> we love Bob, he says. Uh, <laughs> they have an, somebody, Bob has another fan club. I He's do. He's going to be the retired Clay is the president and Clay. only member of the club. <laughs> Clay and Chris. It's a 65 and, and, and over club. <laughs> all right, Clay and Chris, they're voting for Bob. <laughs> all right, all right, guys. <laughs> 
<laughs> Salute. <laughs> well, folks, this is it. This is the time that you all been holding on for. And we got a lot of great presents and giveaways. Hold on. What are we giving away tonight? Teresa's going to write these down because there's no way I'm going back to watch this show. No, I can tell you that. Well, what, Fred, Donnie, what are we giving away tonight? Well, Frank's got the first present. I got the first. I got, and this is kind enough for, from Brian, the, who is the host tonight. <laughs> Big fellas, the girls. Yeah, yeah, you're going to get a, a beautiful hat. I mean, the, the, and this is beautiful. Look at this. The hat and the T-shirt. Now, if you guys are a small... Or, or extra small, we don't have a size. Right? No. <laughs> so, Remember, it's but you big fellas. No, you not can, small not fellas, not the tiny little, fellas, right, teeny right. fellas. Look inside. If it's that's 100% cotton, fellas. we can shrink it. <laughs> <laughs> so, folks, if you're a small person, don't expect the big fellas t-shirt. And Mike Joyner, you cannot win. Mike, you cannot win. <laughs> and, and all of our family, you're out, you're out. All families out. You're out. So the last, the, so we're gonna have three sets of prizes. Come on, you're not supposed to be one doing set, this while you're on the air. You know, it's going to be this beautiful shirt and hat combo. All right. The other set is going to be a uh, ashtray from a, Vertigo. A, a, an ashtray from Vertigo. A Danny Boy pipe. Yes. Okay. Beautiful pipe. Nice. And Very nice. And also a cigar from uh, Mr. Saka himself. So and we'll choose which one you get because that's the way it works. You guys don't get to pick. We, we give you what we decide you guys are worth. Oh, but they're worth the top. They're that's top. They get the Our top. audience Otherwise is top notch. Well, they get a soccer, so that's worth $1,000. That's all right? right. No matter which one we send you, you're going to love that soccer cigar. Oh, I, I, oh you know what, Clay Aikens? He, uh, Aikens. Clay Aikens. I I keep like the diet. Aikens. Like the diet. Aikens. I keep thinking of the American Idol. So Clay says, do you like my new picture? His profile picture. It is a good one. We can actually see you. Before, you were like so small, we had to get our extra magnification. But Clay, I do like the, the new picture. Absolutely. Very, I like the beer. Very sad on Yeah, yeah. And thank you for your service, Clay. Yes, thank, you thank you so you much. Service. And thank you for last week of passing your winnings to Christopher Yowell. Hey, Christopher Yowell. No, that was Chris you. Coulter. Chris Coulter. No, Christopher Yowell. No, Chris Coulter gave the winnings, not Clay. No, Coulter gave it to so, him. Listen, Ryan right. can't remember Jack Shipp. That's the first thing let me tell you. Ryan this is, is, true. is as bad as Bob's. That's no, not true. And, and I'm just a little bit better no, than both. He's people. worse. So he's we're, worse. In, we're in a bad way. It's called all day. It's my fault. It's again. called CRS. Ronnie has a bad I can't remember that's shit. That's right. That's so, right. So that's the second round of winners. Danny Boy Pipe, a Vertigo <laughs> Ashtray, plus a Socrates. Are we going to do three? Three. three. We're gonna three tonight. Yeah, three. Right. Another, three guys. another historic event. <laughs> <laughs> And then we're going to have the other prize will be, it'll be an RNA Treasures pipe Whoa. With, a, with a cigar as well. Look and and another ashtray, a vertical <laughs> ashtray. So, come I on. mean, come on, guys. You listeners, you've been with us. we got some high numbers tonight. We want to make sure you understand that the Chicago oh, Pipe yeah. Club does Orlando, it right. Orlando's funny. Orlando's like, I'm still waiting for the prizes. I went two weeks ago. Tap, tap, it's in the mail. Hey, it's in the mail. What do you think we need to do? Hey. We gotta go. Ronnie goes out. He, he's, he's, well, no, this is not on me. It's, this it's is not. on our man Luciano. So you gotta wait, Orlando. You don't wanna wait? Forget about it. We'll keep it. We'll send it to somebody else. Well, Luci nice Luciano's guy. doing events right now, yeah. so, so he will get it. back. To hey, listen, you. He will. Have a little patience. Come on, you gotta get it. Yeah, you're, you're holding up the chooch. You're, you're holding up the chooch. You know, the chooch was listen. No. Back in the day. They're holding up the, the, the sauce squash. But it's, the it's, the squash. <laughs> but it's the Look, Chris Cutler just said he got his yesterday. There you go. Come on, there you go. Orlando. Let's run some hey. green lights. Will Mahoney says good things come to those who win. That's right. so And Will Mahoney got a beautiful prize, too. Yeah, Thank exactly. you, Will, for all Orlando. your support. Don't worry. Orlando, we might cut you out of our will. If you, if you, if you, you know, Orlando, I thought we blocked you. What the, well, how are you on again? Stay in Miami, will you? <laughs> you know, all right. So let me let me ask you a couple of questions to the guys, and then I'll go to the, to the, to the listeners. All right. First question to the guys. 
I figure, why not? Did the high numbers have anything to do with it, Frank? The high numbers didn't make everything. Uh, what was the band's first name? The big band's first name? The big band? Uh, uh, you know, a big band's first name before they transitioned to another name. A big rock and roll band yes. first name before they transition to the name everyone knows do you know who that was the who? <laughs> <laughs> bob, is, bob is now the new church man uh, no 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 <laughs> I, because you brought up the high numbers i i thought of the who right away <laughs> well they were all high all right you know, well yeah that's all right. All all right, right. Go. oh timmy's anxious, right. timmy's anxious. Well, so uh on this date in history tim uh this was back in 1960 i'm making shit up 1974 maybe uh, because yeah why not it, 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 was, it was the first dome stadium and, and it, it hosted its first indoor minnesota astrodome many many astrodome and they call that the concrete floor because if you ever watch those guys play on that, yeah. I've they never bounce. seen a ball bounce as yeah. high as it could. The players bounce. It's like a spool D. <laughs> <laughs> See, Colin got the Astrodome. So you guys are doing all right. Colin's listening. You guys are doing all right. You guys are doing all right. All right. Okay, here you go. One, one question. One the, more question. The teacher in the house. All right. This is for one of the prizes, not for the guys. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is for one of the prizes. What are the prizes? Okay, so oh, which prize? This is going to be for the hat and, and the shirt. The big fellas. Big and fellas, mobile cigar lounge, man. There it and is. Mike, you cannot win. Mike, stay off the text. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This airline officially completed. This was. It's uh, acquisition of TWA and became the world's largest airline. This was back in, I don't know, like 70s, 70, 70s, 70s, yeah, 80s, 80s, yeah. 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 TWA? Don't answer no, that that answer, man. You said TWA. Winner. They acquired TWA. They acquired TWA. I didn't say the answer. No, no, no. They acquired, they acquired TWA. 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 It became the world's largest. I know Paul Mahoney says... American. Could, could American Airlines be the correct answer? Well, let me see. Is he the guy to make the correct answer? Will Mahomes? My man will. Let me make sure. He's oh, the I can tell guy. you that. It I says American. It is American Airlines. American, American Airlines, Airlines. Airlines. Yeah. American Airlines became the biggest. TWA yep. basically was off the planet. But let me tell you, TWA was a real airline. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. That we flew to Italy in right. TWA, Bob and, then, and, I. and then American and, and, became kind of shitty, though. Yeah, yeah. They're well, not too good right they're now. Not, no, they're, they're not. Not. They're up and down. No, they're TWA, not. TWA probably had the most spectacular terminal, terminal. Right. in JFK. Right. It was well, like ultra the modern. It was a work of art. Yeah. So you've got this, Will. You've got this beautiful. Will Mahoney, man. Congratulations. Will Mahoney. Make sure you. What size? Sure you, uh, whatever size this oh, is. Oh, right. I was an XXL. Why? Are you an XXL, Bill? You tell me what you are, because if you're small, I told you don't win. No. <laughs> don't play. Will Mahoney said four X. No. Four X. no. <laughs> All right. Four 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 four. Well, you can stretch it. We can stretch it. Will, tell us what your size you want, buddy. Double XL. Double XL. Double XL for Will. All right. You got it? Brian Sky. Okay. You got Next it. question. Next question. Let's go. Is this a winner right. or for all? This is for That's a winner. Winner. Yeah. That's a winner. 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 We got to get another winner. winner. Stop the cigar and what else? All right. All right, folks. This is for the Danny Boy Pipe, Vertigo, Ashtray, and a Steve Saka Dunk Martin cigar. So please listen carefully. These questions are always interesting. <laughs> this. Rock and roll star in, each, in 1989 on this day in history, he announced his forthcoming marriage to a nine, to 19 year old Mandy Smith. He revealed that he, the couple had been dating for six years. What rock and roll superstar made this announcement? Come on, you guys know that man. <laughs> God, he's rolling uh, with it. It's called a pedophile. <laughs> but, oh, no. I, 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 <laughs> Come on, he's rolling <laughs> with her. Frank. 
Frank, it's rock and roll. I know, rock and roll. <laughs> you know, sweet 16. Oh, come on. <laughs> says Bill Wyman. Yeah. And Bill Wyman is the company. Yes, it is. Sir. Rolling. I said it. Rolling. <laughs> Stones. <laughs> and, and how about Bill Wyman's son married, married. Bill Wyman's mother? <laughs> no, Bill Wyman's son married the mother of Bill Wyman's uh, wife. Yeah, I mean, check that out. No, no, yeah, yes, no, only yes. in rock and roll, That's man, such, can this shit happen. <laughs> That's like when Eric, <laughs> Eric and George swapping wives, man. Wow. Oh, yeah, 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 well, yeah. Yeah, Bill Wyman's yeah. wife, his son wow. married his wife's mother. Yeah, I take mean, that, that family that is... on Christmas time, man. That's gotta be great. <laughs> Relationships work. How do, how do you say that? Like, what do you say? Is that my mother's brothers are that your father becomes your father, mother-in-law? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Man. I don't know how it That's all I know. <laughs> it's too twisty. But you know what? It's all rock and roll, man. So Bill Anthony says he got a right for four thousand. Who says he got it? Bill right? Anthony. Bill Anthony Let's says look he got a right for four thousand. No, no, he didn't. Bill Anthony. Uh, either you're looking at something very different than we are, but it's actually. Uh, One, two, three, four answers after that, Bill Anthony. Yeah. Which yeah, is the back on our bill? Believe me, you know how we are. We the we'll make the like adjustment if you need. Right. But we're showing you four answers age. after. You know, the Pelican needs that age. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, right Bill Anthony. Bill, Bill Anthony. Too fresh. Anthony, it's too strong. It's like Penzance. You'll have another chance. Yeah. One more chance, guys. One more chance. So let's go. Again, again. it could be the delay. We have no control of the delay. No, it's your internet. Yes. And now we're into that. What are you, you going to do? <laughs> we're trying to do the right thing, guys. We oh, really wait. are. Okay. So you know, for, when you have questions like this, rock and roll, they just, it brings out the best of people. It really does. Or the worst. Or the worst. <laughs> or the worst. That, that's what we're looking at here. Who's in rehab this <laughs> week? <laughs> <laughs> on, on, yeah. on this state in history, uh, this uh, rock and roll singer, uh, was sentenced to a 30-day jail suspension with 60 days of anger management and was fined $1,000 uh, for accusations that he assaulted a sex worker at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, a legally licensed brothel in Mount House, Nevada. Yeah, I know that place. woman around the throat and throwing her against the wall. Wow. Who this rock and roll a singer? Wow. <laughs> no, it wasn't Boy George. <laughs> Boy, George doesn't do Boy George wouldn't be at the bunny ranch. <laughs> he is the bunny at the bunny ranch. <laughs> oh, who said Vince Neil? Holy shit. Eduardo. Vince Neil is the correct Holy answer. shit. Eduardo oh. from Philadelphia. Eduardo thinks he Amazing, Eduardo. You're right. It was it was Motley Crue's singer, yeah. Vince Neil. Yeah. So we I got an answer. To to Brian the Joyner. Ranch. Brian Joyner was an answer. No, Mike Joyner. Brian Joyner was not the funny. <laughs> yeah, you're number one, by the way. <laughs> That's from your brother. <laughs> wow. Is that it? Yeah. Well, three dollars. You want a question for you? Yeah. I'll give you one. For you, you. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. This, this go. is for Tim. Yeah. All right. Only Tim. Who made Who made their very first television appearance on this day in history in 1950? 1950. Their very first. Very. He was a noted. He was a noted golfer. Uh, he He was also uh, very much involved. In the uh, military effort, yeah, 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 yeah. Bob Hope, Bob Hope, Bob Hope. Bob Hope. Bob Hope. Bob Hope. of course, Bob come Hope. on. Yeah, Bob Hope. Yeah. Made his first. He made his debut. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. The USO. He did that for the, yes, every yeah. year for the USO. With the Andrew sisters. Wow. Oh, with everybody. With everybody. Everybody. Yep. Marilyn, Marilyn did it. Marilyn Monroe was there. Yeah. Bob was All there, right. too. Remember? I was there. <laughs> <laughs> and Brian Jordan was not. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got to put this up. Hold on. I got to put this up. This is too funny. This is. Okay, Colin. <laughs> Did you know that Vince Neil would put his junk in a burrito so his wife wouldn't smell other one of women on? Oh, 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 oh
with special sauce on that one. Oh, <laughs> man. That, that, was a, that was called a Texas, a Texas Longhorn. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I would have thought it was a Detroit chimichanga. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, and then wait a minute, Orlando. Oh, Orlando, said, really, Tom, Orlando? Tom Jones would put socks on in his crotch. Not that I was looking. Oh, you were looking. <laughs> you were looking, Orlando. <laughs> oh. Because he wanted to have us. He wanted the appearance of a bigger package. Wow. So Tom Jones. That's why you know that happened. You know. All right. I mean, Bruce Stark says I may never eat another burrito. <laughs> Bruce, go take that blue pill. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> well, wow. everybody, man, oh, man, what a fantastic show. The opening of the Chicago International Pipe Show. You've seen some of the best people that are going to be here to, this week. And I hope if you, if you miss this show, please make plans to come here for 2025. It's going to be the same week right here again. We already booked it. We already booked it. Same week, huh? Okay. I just, what what's that? I, I wasn't a lie then. I can't, I can't oh, Orlando. Some of this stuff. So Richard Beard says Orlando helped him tuck the socks in there. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, Orlando, you were you were his roadie. Oh <laughs> man, oh, Orlando man. was his private packer. <laughs> oh wow. Back Tom Jones's package. That's hey it. Orlando, did you do Engelbert <laughs> Humperdinkel too? Huh? I'm just asking. Humperdinkel. <laughs> So if you've ever heard of uh, Engelbert Humperdinck, uh, that's the Iranian uh, version of Engelbert Humperdinck. Uh, Humperdinck. Wow. All right. Oh, I don't God. Know. You have to end the show that way because I don't know what else to say. That escalated no. quickly. Yes, it. Colin, it did. The show's <laughs> over. Good night. Hey, and, and, and hopefully no, you get your ass over to the no, show. No, gotta, with with all your listeners, honestly, the big fellas, Mobile Cigar, thanks everyone for following us. If you can make it down, come on down to the show. Stop over here right at the this, this Cigar Mobile Lounge and check this place out. It's you'll love something it. you'll never you see will before. Love and and we, you'll probably never see again. And you know, we you know, got until the, next year. We got the man from Saskatchewan. So, you know, Daniel oh, is from Canada, Saskatchewan. Canada, in the Canada. house. You know, and that's Jamie's like, from Canada. Yeah, so we Jamie. got Jamie. Jamie's from Canada. Can those shirts be ordered online? Bro. Brian, yes or no? They, they, soon, yeah. Soon. Soon. Well, soon sound. How soon? How soon? They want to know the exact time and they date. They want to know when. Right now, we're already super put a storefront up on, online. So. All right. So we're All right. But if you want to text, you know, send me an email to your Send them an email. email. Right. PM yeah. them on their PM Facebook them. page. Yeah. And, and, uh, that one out and, and, and what colors will they be available? Black and black. <laughs> black, and black. black. Any color you want, but black, black. Black. as long as they're black and white. <laughs> Everybody, just listen up. We still have all the are all there. Understand, starting tomorrow at 9 o'clock, Frank and Bob are going to be in the room with Jeff Grasick and Jamie Connolly, Alan Boyd. And the what time? Nine o'clock. So Bob, you have Bob, to wake up Bob early. Doesn't wake Bob doesn't wake up till I get out of bed at so. nine o'clock. <laughs> Bob doesn't even get out of bed. Wow. wow. Honestly, uh, starting there. Jamie, if start you, at ten. <laughs> if you want to see incredible pipe making in person by some of the best there is, tune in. Frank and Bob will have that for you live Some tomorrow of these morning do work, and Thursday. Oh, it's Friday night, right? Well, they can see us another time. Well, yeah, you can no. always I check mean, us out 24 yeah, 7. We got six okay, years okay. of shows that you can look at. But I know I will see it another time. The entire <laughs> week, Frank and Bob is going to show everything of this educational club well, is doing not, not for everything. you. Not, not everything. Like we're going to be posting no. for, for 35 hours. No. Uh, I, Ronnie's making things up as you yeah, no, no, no. You're going to see everything. You They're going to be everywhere. You, you, we'll you, give you little clips you, of here you, and there. We'll give you or some nice little, little uh, tidbits. If you want to see everything, Come, come, come to the show. What the hell? Right, what do we look like? Hey, listen. Oh, for $50, here for you, you know. listen, it's only $50. <laughs> and that $50 will include $24 of drinks. That's coffee, water, beer, and spirits, whiskey. man. Whiskey. All right? 
you're getting 24 dollars drinks on the Chicago Pipe Club. So really, come on down, man. Come on down and check us out and, and, and hang out this cigar moment. Ronnie's picking up the tab for everything else. So maybe if you're good. If you're good. Yeah. Everyone, we can't thank you enough, man. You, no. I can't put a sock in his pants. I'll buy you a drink. Everybody stay <laughs> on. You don't want to get rid of us. Huh? <laughs> they can't get rid of us. I mean, no, really. No, because uh, we're together now. When we're all together, then the, 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 the shit really hits the Oh, man. man. You know. right? uh, the triplets are here to bring you the best show, <laughs> the best podcast in 75 fucking countries around the world. <laughs> Even Six have, years straight. One person in Vietnam. That watches us. That's it. That it's a country. There, I don't know who he is. No, it's not a guy. It's Mama Son. We have it's a Mama Son. We have <laughs> two people in India. We have, uh, I think, Singapore. Six people in Italy because we have a bigger Italian. Oh, yeah, you know, so that's that's the thing. Hey, Canada. Wherever <laughs> Canada, Canada is. is. <laughs> oh, we got Daniel. He's out every week. Saskatchewan. <laughs> Hey, really, honestly, all right. thank we you can't thank you all. We hope you had a great time. We appreciate time. it. And yes. check us out tomorrow. Or check us out when you can. Yeah. All the, Everything we got to offer here at this show this week, you will see. That's it. So from all of us to all of you, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night, everybody. We'll Take see care, you on folks. next Tuesday. Oh, yeah. The, we'll meet the we'll wrap up. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be back up. Where, where we belong. Yeah, we'll be back where we belong. <laughs> <laughs> and warm Although, listen, we brought some nice weather. We did. 67 degrees here in Chicago right now. Yeah. Come on. Yep. Yeah. That's right. You know? It was only 10 more degrees in Florida. So. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Good night, everyone. Keep it smoking. Tell my brothers to light them up. We'll drink that whiskey from those old dirty cups. We'll toast to the present, the future, and the past. This ain't my first train, but I sure it ain't my last. Cause this world is so beautiful. I see its love come shine through. This world is so beautiful. I feel its love come shine through.